it's still difficult for white to uh, hold because uh, white has two, black has two pawns. And yes, it's extra piece, but we have uh, three minutes. White one. Mate, mate on the board. It's mate. She oh. stepped. She didn't realize. And after King C4, oh why God. is threatening mate? Oh my God. If you haven't clipped anything yet, that was a moment to remember. Jeez. Okay. An end game where Black was trying. Welcome to the semifinals of the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Sophie and myself will be covering two exciting matches to see who will play in the finals of the first ever Chess.com Women's Speed Chess Championship. Sophie how do you feel about today's match? Oh, I feel very excited and I'm glad to be here covering the semifinals. I think we're getting closer and closer to the finals and today we will have very tough match ahead, I would say. Indeed, today's players are Harika Dronavali of India facing Alina Danielian from Armenia. The two have fought their way to the semifinals. Let's just have a look at the brackets on what was the exact path of these two players. Yeah, Elena Danielian, she won qualifier tournament and then being uh, the underdog, she beat the top seed Katerina Lachno, who is world bleeds, world champion. Indeed, and that was a very tight match. It was an even score until the very end. Every portion, they tied the score and the last bullet game was the decisive one. That's where Elena managed to win the match. Yeah, it was indeed very impressive. And Harika won her match against Marie Sabak, very strong player from France with a big margin, five points, and she was very comfortable. It's going to be a very tough match today. And I think we're going to have a lot of exciting games. The players themselves already feel very comfortable with the format because they already played the match matches and uh, the tournament. So they know where they can improve in what uh, portion. And I'm really looking forward to the start of the games. Me too. And according to our smart or chess predictions, this is going to be a very close match. It gives a 52% win probability to Harika and 48 for Elena. That's basically just a one point difference that can go either way. And the portion where smart or chess is predicting Harika to win is the three plus one with one point, the five plus one with one point, but the bullet would go for Elena. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, I think uh, three plus one is the favorite time control for both players, as they said in their interviews mm -hmm. uh, before, and bullet, uh, they just enjoy, they have fun. Uh, but they, of course, um, practice. Um, as we asked uh, Harika, she was, uh, really playing four or five hours of bullet because she was not very familiar with it. And online chess, uh, we know that it, uh, there can be a lot of mouse sleeps, mm -hmm. a lot of blunders. So uh, they both are prepared, I think. What do you think? How it will go? Do you agree with the smart chess predictions? Yeah, I think the smarter chess predictions is close to what I would have predicted myself, that it's going to be a close match. Even though Harika in classical chess uh, is the favorite, but this is online chess and a shorter time format. So I think that Elena has good chances. After knocking out the top seed, Katerina Lano, that was a huge achievement already. And she qualified her way into the women's championship. So she is the only player who had to fight her way into the knockout system by winning the qualifier tournament that we yeah. also covered. And that's very tough because it's a tournament. You need to win a lot of games. It's not a match. And yeah, she, she is indeed very, very strong. They are both looking great, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, and they are looking ready for the fight. Very, yeah, very, very focused and concentrated already. The games will start in a minute. The two players are already in the chess.com live arena and we will be focusing, of course, First on the five plus one portion, that's how we begin every single match. 90 minutes of five minutes plus one second time control. And we also keep an eye on the chat, of course. So hello everyone on Chess TV and on Twitch. We are watching, make sure to be nice to the community, to the players, and let's root for a very exciting match. Tell us who are you rooting for if you had to pick from Harika and Elena. Both are so nice, it's difficult to choose, but make your choice. Yeah, we, we are definitely very interested who you are rooting for. So please do write in chat. We are in chat. We are able to read it. And we will start the games very soon, as you mentioned. Five plus one. I'm really 
uh, interested what kind of openings they prepared because Harika is uh, usually having a thought, as we saw in uh, the previous match, she's having a thought what to play, when to play, in which time portion, mm -hmm. as well as Alina. She tried a lot of different openings. Uh, she tried a lot of different systems uh, versus um, Katarina. And in the qualifier mm -hmm. tournament as well, she used a lot of Turk. Now let's see who prepared what and what do they have up to their sleeves. I'm curious about the opening repertoire that they will choose for today's match. And the game has just started, so let's see the first game where Harika has the white pieces and she started with 1c4, the English opening. It can still transpose, but after c4, e4, we are likely to see b5 from black or c5. These are the two main options. Indeed. Uh, when I uh, face this um, line, I'm not feeling very comfortable because there are a lot of complicated lines where you have to really know everything move by move otherwise mm -hmm. you might get in uh, some trouble but after this uh, moves e4 knight of three d6 and if white plays d4 we will uh, get into the marotti uh, structure where I personally like white because of spade. Me too. Um, so this is the Marotti setup when you have the pawns on e4 and c4. You can get this pawn structure from a Sicilian or in this case, the English opening. I agree with you that because of the more spaceful white, it looks very comfortable and I do prefer white, but it's a tiny advantage and it can go either way. Yeah, exactly. Black has a lot of opportunities for the counterplay. If black manages actually to break through in the center, then Black solved all his problem, and uh, then it's uh, the moment where Black takes over. If d5 or a6, b5 mm -hmm. is on the board, then Black is doing very good. Yeah, those are the breakthroughs that Black is aiming for, as Sophie already highlighted. If Black can get those moves in the right moment, opening up the position, then um, she will manage to equalize. And also, the good point of this system for Black is that the hatchhog, when you have the pawns, on the, the sixth rank it's a very solid system so less space for black but it's not easy to win against it because it is white who has to either go for a king side attack or a breakthrough on the queen side exactly and now elena uh, developed bishop d7 a6 she goes uh for the b5 plan because there is another way to uh, develop with b6, mm -hmm. bishop b7, and playing for uh, d5. But I like this one uh, better because I think that it's easier to play for b5 rather than uh, d5. And what white is doing, white is trying to keep all this uh, counterattack under control. Um, white should not allow d5 or b5 and uh, she should have some, um, she should use this space and the d5. Yeah, that's exactly what both players are aiming for. So if you need Maruti set up strategies, middle game ideas, Sopico is your teacher. And I'm here to remind you as well about the time control that I think the two players, as you said, they seem to be ready for this match in a sense that the first match when they played in the quarterfinals, they both were a bit nervous about how this match will go because they have never played a match like this yeah. earlier. But now with the experience of that one match, it's not like huge experience, but they have some experience. And, and it's important. It is. And the, that's why I think the time management is also quite balanced. Both have been practicing on chess.com too. It yeah. goes to show that they are ready for the blitz portion as well. Queen d2 is very interesting group with the ideas of knight d5 mm -hmm. uh, to exchange the bishop because if it was white's move now, knight d5 is a tactical uh, motive. Yeah, I'm going to show that real quick because it's beautiful. So let's say black makes a silly move b5. Then white is able to go knight d5, the queen is hanging, and if you take the queen, white has an intermediate move check, and then you take back the queen, and you, so far you have an extra knight. That's great. Yeah, and if queen goes back, then you take the bishop, and the d6 pawn will be lost. So um, this was the idea. That's why queen c7 was played by Lena to avoid knight d5 moves. But after queen c7, um, I'm afraid that it will be difficult to play for b5. Usually what happens is mm -hmm. queen goes to b8, rook comes to uh, fd8. And it, this is sort of position where you have to think because you made all your moves and then you can wait mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> yeah. 
let's see how the game will go so far. Harika has the upper hand because of uh, having what we already mentioned, more space, very comfortable piece setup, but it's not going to be that easy to break through. They have played a couple of moves. I'm just going to fast forward to the moment where White goes for the Queen Bishop battery, threatening Bishop B6 to win the exchange that's here. That's Rook on D8, Knight D7 prevents it. But that also means that black pieces, pieces are lacking space. And knight a4 heading toward the b6 square with the knight this time. Knight c5 blocking the diagonal. Yeah, indeed. Exactly. The uh, danger of this position is actually that white is trying to get um, minor pluses here and there on the queen side, on the king side. And uh, for black, it's important to keep the position under control. And for white, it's important to be patient and not to overreact let's say, start direct attack on g5, uh, g4, g5, or and h4, and so on. Though it, sometimes it's an idea. Bishop f4 is a nice way to put pressure on d6. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did not repeat moves. I was just going to say that once yeah. they repeated, so the knight jumps, where this is the same, same position, but obviously Harika is playing for a win. She doesn't want to make a draw in the first game yeah. with the white pieces. Yeah, she's ahead on clock as well. And after Bishop f4, knight, uh, knight e5, there were ideas with uh, connected with queen g3, and it is mm -hmm. on the board already. Um, h6 pawn is hanging, and knight on e5. Um, sometimes it can be taken. Sometimes there are ideas with c5. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like b4, c5, or knight a4 back. Though after bishop a4, ba, we ruin our structure. But yeah, knight g6 is a nice way to uh, treat it. Yes, that closes the g5, so the bishop takes h6 cannot happen because the pin is not existing anymore. And also with the knight on g6, as Topico mentioned, sometimes these bishop f4 ideas were possible. What is keeping the bishop? So she moved away the bishop as soon as knight g6 appeared on the board. This is a very important bishop. You see how, how much mobility this bishop has. It's a very powerful piece, unlike the f1 bishop. That's a bit yeah. stuck there. And I love the way actually Harika is playing uh, this game because with moves like bishop e3, queen f2, now the threat again is bishop b6, and the knight is actually cannot go to d7 anymore because mm -hmm. knight is on g6. So the game has to change. The game has different character now. Yeah, as Sophie pointed out here, by moving back and forth, threatening on the king side and on the queen side, and then uh, once again, just switching back to this initial idea with bishop b6, it was not possible to go for knight d7 anymore. Queen h5, knight maneuvering toward the king side, g3, f4, and d4 are all possible squares. And it's a minute of time advantage, a minute and a half already for Harika. So Elena really needs to speed up because yeah. this is the final minute for the Armenian Grandmaster. She calculated bishop h4, trying to provoke g3 to weaken the white king. Yeah, I do like it for white though, and it's very difficult to play with black pieces under a minute because you have to come up with some plan. You cannot be passive forever. That's why Elena goes d5. D5 is a nice way uh, to break through, though I'm a bit puzzled why did she need to uh, to play bishop h4, mm. g3, because bishop on g2 yeah. uh, can be dangerous. Mm. Though knight g3 might have been a problem, and this was a smart mm. provocation, maybe. Yes, it's always a question whether you want that g3 or not, who makes favors, and after bishop b6, black is needing to solve the situation where the rook doesn't have much space it only had the d7 and d6 squares now the, the c file opens up and this bishop is still on the back rank rook c8 is a threat yeah it's not that simple for black to defend now with this pin so far harika is playing a brilliant game brilliant strategic game with all these moves with provocations using the weaknesses on the queen side the dark square weaknesses bishop b6 was a nice precise move mm -hmm. to uh, force the rook to come to d7 and then use the c file and the back rank. She calculated another capture. She has a minute and a half of time advantage and a lot of pressure in, on Elena, but there are also threats in Black's position. From Black's side, I mean that, for instance, the back rank can be vulnerable in White's camp. Yeah, exactly. Bishop h3 is an interesting move. I thought like h4 was another option. Queen d1, king g2 probably, and rook d2. What are we going to do? Indeed, suddenly this black hole is attacking. So this was the one danger that 
vice position has in it, the back rank is vulnerable. I mean, this is what we were describing. And Harika even provoked uh, Lina to go for it. Queen d1 and rook d2. Yeah. What does she want? And now she goes back. She must have miscalculated something. Yeah. Yeah, probably she missed queen d1 check and it was not nice to go knight g1 because of rook d2 again. But after bishop f1, rook d2, it's black who seems to uh, take over. Oh, oh, oh the, the queen is queen trapped. Is, no, rook e2. Well, rook e2. Tra trade with the pin and. But wait, who, 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 yeah. does, who does want the, it, 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 was trap. <laughs> it was trap, but it was pinned. So they traded queens in a very funny way. And now we are in a minor piece and game that we should evaluate calmly for whom does this. It was a great combination for uh, from Alina, but uh, the time is big problem for her. Under 20 seconds to play this game. Uh, it should be very tough, though she doing it very nicely, g5, h5, and using the bishop on c6, uh, pinning the f3 pawn with g4 ideas. I love how this game uh, continued. Indeed, but there's only 19 seconds left for Elena, so she's in serious time pressure. It's true that because of the pin, she had an attack on the f3 pawn now that bishop is traded. This game seems to peter out to a draw, but yeah. what a game to start the match with. We didn't know what was going on in that moment. That's I was getting excited that the queen is trapped, but there was a pin on the second rank, and then they just <laughs> traded queens, and we are looking at an equal bishop and game right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the beauty of chess, isn't it? It is, and I think there were tactics things because in that moment, there must have been something. It felt like that's a moment where there was some tactical yeah. motive. They don't have time to go back to it because the second game is just about to start, but I'm sure that in our articles about the news report about the match it will be highlighted that that was a mischance for one of the players because we yeah. didn't have time to calculate it ourselves. exactly it's very tough it's but uh, it's easy for us to sit here and commentate but when you're actually playing and you the time is ticking and you have to be very uh skillful with the mouse it's mm. very very tough to play so uh kudos to both players for such first game mm -hmm. what a game to start the match yeah i loved it great introduction to what we are about to see for three hours this is going to be a three hour match and the interview so make sure to stay here for the whole three and a half almost four hour show that we are here to bring you and if you're not watching on twitch make sure to come to twitch.tv slash chess and hit that follow button because that's how you will get notifications to your email every time chess.com starts a broadcast about the women's speech chess championship about the junior speech chess championship and the general speech chess championship that will start shortly with Anish Giri, Sofiko's husband, being the top seed. I'm going to disturb him. <laughs> <laughs> just going to enter the room and just going to disturb him. That's what he does. <laughs> he just walked in a minute before we had to go on air. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> round number keep four. Him out. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. It, that was the most difficult part of our getting ready for the show, <laughs> getting rid of some world number four. Yeah, and we have London system on uh, the board. Alina is playing um, the uh, these type of structures, and I like it very much because in Blitz, when you're under pressure, it's easy to play the structures, uh, structural openings, and maybe your opponent is not ready. So I like the way that Alina is handling it so far and the first game it shows that alina is full of resourcefulness she's very resourceful mm -hmm. she uses all kind of tactics and everything uh, that she gets chance to yeah and this this is a great chance when you are ahead in development there's already some pressure in the center we shall see how harika will try to equalize because so far white has put pressure on the back position because of this possible capture that will open the c5 the c5 pawn can be vulnerable this could be a potential pin so there's some pressure not that much but this is similar to how the first game went that yeah. white has a slight advantage and the initiative and we shall see how black reacts to that yeah i agree with you the only danger for white is that she shouldn't trade a lot of pieces because 
in the end game, I think it will be advantage for Black to have uh, three against two on the queen side uh, rather than having double pawns um, on uh, the king side four against three. So mm -hmm. she, Black will have a bit of advantage in the end game, but so far White is putting pressure on the open C file and the C5 pawn. And uh, White has actually lots of ideas connected with the C file and sometimes like B4, E4, um, and so on. Yes, the rook coming to the E file is clearly pointing at this potential pawn push E4. I'm sure that Elena is calculating when is the best moment. Giving this check usually means that then you want to move the bishop, bishop to, to F5. F5 yeah. And simply by including the check before you place the bishop on F5, you make sure that the king is somewhat worsely placed than if it was on G8. On G8, it's protecting the F7 square. So on A8, it can be somewhat more vulnerable, plus the pawn itself can become vulnerable with the queen here on F5. Exactly. Very, very nice subtlety. King on H8 uh, is definitely worse than king on g8 also ideas connected with g4 g5 is also there and open h file can come handy uh to white as uh there can be check on the h file miss so, tactics already seeing mate on the h just file i'm being, just telling just you i'm just telling you <laughs> But I like it because queen c2, she didn't trade it, uh, mm -hmm. trade the queens. So it's clear that Alina has g4, g5 in mind. Um, and I, I, I think that we will see g4 very shortly. Knight c7, knight e6, also a very good maneuver just to make sure that g5 doesn't work comfortably for white. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think both players are playing extremely well, very precise moves. And this is how the match we are predicting is going to be most of the games with yeah. very balanced games, tiny advantage for one player. I'm curious if we will see big blunders because in Harika's match, Harika against Marisa Sabat, that was one of the matches where there were very few mistakes. And yeah. in online chess, we are used to seeing big blunders. Elena herself, in the match she won, she blundered her queen. Yeah. <laughs> she did say, though, in uh, the interview um, that she will, would work uh, for her one move blunders, and that's uh, the way she prepared for this match. She drew conclusions uh, about uh, Harika's weaknesses and strength, but she didn't want to be very open about it. And uh, Harika also said that Elena is very strong player. She is very resourceful and she loves tactics. So it's uh, going to be a very interesting and exciting match. Harika, of course, as an optimist person, she gives uh, uh, herself more chances, uh, but uh, Elena didn't want to uh, choose the favorite one because uh, she said that uh, she hopes that they would play interesting mm -hmm. games and they would have fun fun as we yeah. would have. And it, it's very good that you highlighted that it's not just that they have now the experience that they played a match, but they also watch the other players' match because they can yeah. re-watch. And that's what you can also do. You can replay the broadcast. So that was part of their preparation, replaying the match of their opponent and trying to see the weak spots in their play and what to do in which time control. Yeah, exactly. And when you're already familiar with the format, you can already plan where to um, push, like in bullets, in three minute plus, where to do what. So that's uh, that was a very good um, thing for the players to have experience. And we have pretty normal end game. Um, I like it a, for black because it is an end game. And I think that three uh, versus two is an advantage, but I don't see, um, I don't see difficulties for white to defend it. Yes, A4 was important because the one threaded black hat was giving the check on A1 to pick up the A3 pawn after a trade of rooks on the B5. But so far this is very balanced. G4 trying to gain space on the king side. It's more about keeping it here than having the idea of pushing G5. It's going to be yeah. difficult to go for F4, G5. You don't really want to go that yeah. bold with no pieces on the board, at least. Exactly. It's a nice move because it is against H5. We know that the ideal pawn structure in the opening is to have F7, G6, H5. And with G4, Alina doesn't allow this uh, pawn structure. And I like it very much because uh, after F3, uh, G4 pawn is... Um, very much protected. And if you want to break it, you have to play f5, which weakens the king side, the seventh rank, and white have uh, white will have a lot of uh, counter chances. Indeed, 
Black has now the idea of bringing the queen to h4 in queen and games. Perpetual check is one of the most important defensive tools that a player can apply. And here, even though Black doesn't have any real problems, it's good to activate the queen with a check. So she's waiting for the right moment to play queen h4 or bring the queen to f6, for instance, try to get in to b2 with the queen. Exactly. And the checks are not... Uh, disturbing because you want your king to be in the center in, only in the end game not in the middle game but king is very strong piece in the end game and uh don't be afraid of checks uh because if you're not losing the pawn of course uh it's nothing uh dangerous and we will have perpetual for the draw both players uh i think are happy with the draw in this game because it was a very very even game it was some slight advantage at the beginning for white from the opening, but it, it was never really materializing into more than that. So it was a balanced game, good result for both. Yeah, exactly. And I think they don't disappoint us at all. We thought that it's going to be a tough match and it's going to be a pretty close match. So far, two draws, two very nice games without any big blunders. We very strategic yeah. games. We have now again English opening, though this time Alina uh, plays e5 um, and not uh, knight f6, c5, and e6. So I like that Alina is so flexible. She's always changing the opening reporter and she's not giving her opponent time to settle. Like, is c4 really working for Harika or not? I really like this approach. Yeah, changing uh, in the variation, so the English opening and then reacting to it in a different way. We shall see how this game will unfold. And before we continue with the analysis, I wanted to bring up the question of the day. Every broadcast, we have a daily question. And today's question, I think, will be very interesting because it goes like this. Who is the strongest chess playing family in history? Who? Ooh. I think I'm sitting next to one of the candidates. <laughs> just saying, just saying, but make sure to tweet us. There are a lot of, a lot of <laughs> candidates. Make sure to tweet us using the hashtag speeches. Um, I'm not sure um, what are we accepting here. I think everything. Couples, sister, brother, brothers, sisters, right. entire families, like if the mother and father and the the child also plays or children so be creative come up with the strongest chess playing families and i think in families we can basically go for any kind of family relation yeah, i agree with you uh music chuk sisters they for both instance. played in the candidates and the polgar uh, sisters yeah and the polgar we should never <laughs> forget <laughs> the polgar sisters i was like let's not tell the answer to people but we don't i think there's no one correct answer yeah. Let's just bring up as many of the chess playing families as we can and make sure to include Sopiko. <laughs> because she <laughs> and Anish together, that's a power couple. But now back to the game and seeing we have to adopt you and then, <laughs> then we will be the strongest family. <laughs> I would love to be adopted by the Giving <laughs> Ramesh Willy family. I'm already basically a godmother. Yeah. Unofficial yeah. godmother Unofficial. of, of <laughs> baby tactics. But now we need to get back to the game after this trade on F3. It is a pair of bishops for white and more space because of the D5 form. But C6 comes in the right moment, I think, to make sure that there has to be a trade. Yeah. Pair of bishops is always nice to have, uh, but you have to have open position because bishops love open diagonals. Um, so the bishop on f3 is not very attractive for the moment, but I think that white has uh, a lot of um, plans in her mind. For example, bishop uh, g2 f4 comes to mind. It was very nice decision by uh, Harika to keep the d5 pawn and not to uh, trade it uh, dc6, b6, because then um, she would give Alina the center and the d5 and d4 would be very annoying. But keeping the pawn on d5, it also restricts uh, the knight from many squares. And uh, she probably has uh, plans. Oh, though knight of 5 yeah. knight d4 is very strong. And I was also going to say that it's great that she keeps the space advantage, but it comes with a price because white now has doubled D pawns and both are isolated as well. So the pawns themselves on D5 and D3 can be really weak. Knight an opposite color bishop endgame. Well, endgame, not yet, but getting to the endgame. I'm already, I'm already seeing the endgame. 
<laughs> dreams. You are, you are. <laughs> this bishop is protecting both pawns, so it's unlikely that Black will manage to come up with an, an effective attack as long as the bishop stays on e4. But it also restricts the mobility of the e4 bishop on the king, the queen side. On the king side, it has exactly. mobility, but not on the queen side. I agree with you, though. Uh, the last move I don't like very much, rook c8, because uh, yes, it is open file and rooks are good on open file, but um, I don't think that there is much going on. I would more play rook a5, rook b5 to put the pressure on uh, the b2 pawn mm -hmm. uh, rather than having the rook on c file. Because mm -hmm. if, let's say, rook c1 anyway, um, then, yeah, I don't see... But I'm wrong. I'm wrong because rook c1, white cannot play rook c1 right now because the b2 pawn is hanging. And what Alina wants is to double on c file. And then, of course, c file is very strong. If black plays rook c7, rook c8, mm -hmm. and manages to play rook c2, um, then white is in big trouble. Now, a couple of moves later, we have this position. So h4, rook c5. I thought I missed more than that. Now, the Pawn going to h5. Alpha zero has all these flank pawn moves, and everybody started going for them, yeah. <laughs> including the world champion Magnus Carlsen at Norway Chess and other super tournaments. He was inspired. He was inspired. <laughs> he in, he actually said that he was inspired by two of his heroes, Alpha zero and Daniel Dubois, who was yeah. one of the seconds of Magnus at the world championship match. But now back to this game where White is doing very well on the light square. So that's the difference when you have opposite colored bishops. If you manage to attack on the light squares. Black can never do anything about it with her bishop. Exactly. And uh, h4, h5 was a very nice move to create some uh, counter chances on the king side. And I loved uh, Elena's uh, maneuver, queen d8, mm -hmm. queen g5. That was uh, very good to trade, though she could have uh, waited a bit and uh, first she could have doubled on uh, the c file. There was no rush to... Um, uh, uh, to trade the uh, queens, but after b3, I think white managed to equalize, and this will probably peter out. It could be another draw, but an exciting one, one more time, where, as Sopika was pointing out in this moment, there was danger in black's position of the bishop e4, threatening queen f5, and ideas about attacking the black king. So the fact that Alina has played queen to d8 already seeing that she wanted to place the queen on g5 yeah. before anything happens to her king. That was a key moment. And now we have this end game on the board with pressure on b7, but the pawn is pushed to b6. So this is an equal position. Oh, this nice. Is sacrifice. Nice. Very nice one. Um, not very much necessary, I think, but after b6, rook c2 was a, a problem uh, to solve for white. So that is why uh, Harika goes for rook b6, bishop b6, rook b6, and d6 pawn is weak, but there is no uh, other piece to attack the d6 uh, pawn. So after king f8, king e7, I think that black should should have upper hand. Especially now with the rook on a7, doubling rooks on the a5, so black rook is attacking the a3 pawn, and now by defending the d6 pawn, yes, white can get into trouble because yeah. of sacrificing the exchange. Uh, I guess the question here is, uh, can white build the fortress or not? Because if white manages to uh, play f6, uh, to provoke f6, then king g4, king f5, maybe even king g6, uh, it's a, a bit uh, ambitious though, uh, but f6 would be a very bad move for uh, black uh, here. So if, let's say, king g4 at some point, I don't know, sh how should we defend? Maybe it's better to give up this the g5, uh, g5 pawn. pawn. Mm -hmm. So the a3 pawn has fallen, but white is about to collect the g5 pawn. I'm just really always so interested about what the players said about their strengths and weaknesses. And it's interesting that Alina mentioned as a weakness, her weakness, experience. So she feels like too much experience can be a weakness. Yeah, maybe because you're kind of afraid of many things. When you just started, you're new, you want to try everything and you want to oh, experience. To draw. Okay, draw. let's just let's just sum up why it happened. The G5 one was about to fall and then it's a pawn and the bishop for the rook. Pawns on one side and white was defending all pawns. So it's actually 
a good result from that yeah. position. Yeah, very nice, bold decision. And uh, now we have Magnus's uh, opening, isn't it? Yes. A6, <laughs> E6, A6. At some point, H6 will come. <laughs> Though, uh, yeah, D4, D5, Ignite C3 was uh, uh, Elena's choice. Also, a very interesting uh, way to keep uh, the match because she's always showing us the new openings that she mm -hmm. prepared for. I love it. Yeah, and it's a funny way to transpose to E4 opening. So I started at the D4, yeah. D5, that's why I'm replaying it. And then they basically landed in a French if black does not take, but even then it could be a French. A6 is usually not on the board that quickly, but it could transpose to actually traditional positions of the French defense. It is a French structure. It is. It is, and I cannot stop Miss Rudolph <laughs> talking about Frenches. The, French is. <laughs> the expert. It's, it's basically the advanced variation of the French, and both players play the French defense with the black pieces. So it's going to be interesting to see how Elena is trying to get advantage against one of her favorite openings. Alina herself plays the French defense and the Karo Khan, which have very similar structures. Yeah, exactly. Both players are familiar with the opening and uh, that's probably what they preferred. I always I'm a zero. <laughs> I'm always gonna call this an Ava Zero move from now on, <laughs> even though it, it already existed, of course, yeah. centuries ago, but H4, H5, or as Simon Williams would say, Harry. <laughs> Harry is going up the board, trying to create an attack on the king side. This rook may come through the third rank. So rook h3, rook g3 is an idea in the French defense when white has more space on the king side, not necessarily wanting to castle. Exactly. Uh, and I like it. This is the reason I like it for white, because of uh, space advantage, because of ideas to create some attack on the king side. And I don't really, I'm not really afraid of uh, Black's counterplay, because if Black wants to have some counterplay, uh, either she should uh, start with B4, A5, C4, I'm not sure, is a good, because it's nice to keep the tension in the center. For example, now uh, C, D, C, D happens. And uh, what's, what is interesting is that Black is also keeping his uh, her king in the center. So mm -hmm. there is no castle. If there was castle on the board, then it's over. Then uh, there is huge attack on the king side and that's it. Bishop of eight, how do you like that? <laughs> oh, well, the problem is that why uh, I was already putting so much pressure on the g7 pawn and there was no other choice. If Black wanted to defend the pawn with rook g8, then there are tactics because of the pin on the g5. So Bishop of eight is a sad move. You don't really want to play this move, but there was no better choice for Harika. Alina is doing therefore excellently, and she can bring the king to f1 or g1, even if there is a danger on the e5. It looks really nice for white and looks very good for Alina. I have a feeling that Alina is uh, so far putting pressure on uh, Harika. I think that only in the first game we saw in the first a uh, fragment of the game that uh, white was better and had some space and uh, some pressure. Uh, but in the second, third game, I thought that Alina is doing really mm -hmm. good. I have good feelings for her. I agree with you. And I think this could be the first decisive game according to our amazing team shout out to everyone working on the broadcast behind the stage as well we have an amazing production team and support team um, and the information i've just got is that three draws uh, to start a match with it actually is a record in a sense that it only happened once at the speed chess championship that was between hikaru nakamura and sagak gregorian in 2017 so if they make it to four draws then they will be the record yeah. holder of Exactly. Only draws at the beginning of the match. I think this could be decisive, though. So, and my prediction is it's going to be decisive. Yeah, time wise, they are both uh, managing time pretty well. Elena uh, is using the time now because it's important moments. Uh, how do you want to uh, continue the game? A lot of things uh, happened. So, let's take a look. Indeed, let's just go through quickly while I was talking about uh, the record of many many draws to start the match with these moves have happened a trade on c6 and then bishop f4 to protect the e5 pawn three moves out from this diagonal still so much pressure and the bishop cannot abandon the back ranks of black can't finish development 
Yeah, now the king is safe on g1, rook is very nice on g3, and b4 is the right way to create the counterplay. Um, generally, what I disliked a bit was the trade of the knights, because um, the more pieces you trade, it's easier for the defender to defend, because uh, there is less pressure. Uh, that is why I disliked it a bit. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, knight on f3 was also not a great piece for white because uh, these two knights disturbed each other. Knight d4 and knight uh, f3, they were coming into each other's name. Uh, wait. Uh, now, as the knight is on c5, another idea for black is to come knight e4. And you don't want to play f3 for that because then you cut the third rank for uh, the rook. So I like b4 very much. Mm -hmm. Now it's important uh, what white will play. Should she take on b4 and play um, defend the uh, knight and then play on c file or bishop b1? A very interesting way because if bc, then rook c3. Yes, b takes c3, rook takes c3 is clearly something that white would love to have on the board, opening up the c file while the black king is still in the middle of the board. A5, gaining more space on the queen side, but it doesn't solve the situation of the king. I think this is a chance for white to build up an attack and strike soon, as soon as possible, because you need to hurry up when your advantage is the initiative and that the black king is not secure yet. I agree with you. And what I'm thinking about is, uh, yeah, Exactly, the knight a4 move. I thought that knight e4 is a big decision for black because then after bishop e4, d takes e4, and maybe of rook e3, the pawn on e4 would be very weak. So what is black doing is uh, that she, where she is strong, she is using that fact. Mm -hmm. She's putting a lot of pressure now on the b2 pawn and on uh, c3 pawn. And it seems like... Black is not in a big danger anymore. After after c4, though, can I take d take c4? Rook, rook c4 six. and rook c4, queen c4, knight b2. What happens? Oh, tactics. So because in fact, let's, let's now just, just show it trade. on the board. D takes, rook takes, knight. No, no. Uh, wait, we want to trade? Yeah. I was like, oh, you want to give that for no. first? No, rook c4, rook c4. Let's see what would happen if I grab the pawn. But my feeling is that with the king here and these pieces, I should be able to yeah. punish black. But I agree with you. Though there should be a clear way to do that because if not, then it's an extra pawn. And who? I love free stuff. To play. Yeah, <laughs> free extra stuff. Pawn. Let's free stuff. Let's see if it happens in the game. It's possible to collect the b2 pawn, but it has a price. And Harika doesn't go for it. I think there was likely something wrong with that line. We don't have time to go into depth. But queen b6 is a logical move to put pressure on the d4 knight. And after bishop e5, finally the bishop can develop because the knight is hanging and it doesn't matter that the pawn is also in the air. Yeah, uh, that's also very important. Um, although it looks very good for white, uh, white has... 30 seconds for the rest of the game and plus one second, of course, but it's very tough. D takes C4, it's getting complicated. Ooh, Rook G7, C3, maybe Queen F3. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Attack against the Black King, but at the same Rook, time, if the attack doesn't go through, six, this is a post pawn. Rook oh, takes yeah. F7 Rook. and Bishop G6. Yeah, that that's beautiful. That's indeed very beautiful. And that's Queen it. F3. Queen of 796 is coming. How do you defend it? There's no way. The bishop is blocking. There's no queen c7. There's no rook c7. Black cannot do anything. Yeah. It's game That's over. Awesome. Beautiful. That, that, that was beautiful. Rook it takes f7 just in the right moment. If not, then there could be trouble already on the queen side. So white has to act immediately, giving up the rook temporarily for bishop g6, this pin, and there's no defense. Wow, what a game. Under 30 seconds. King d8 it was the only move, queen f7, and now knight e6 again is a big threat. If you go king c7, once again knight e6, queen e6, then mm -hmm. rook d7 doesn't work. It's so, everywhere. Yeah. So after king c7, which I think is the only move, I think even, why not queen king c7? She took, took, and but after taking 
or have this many is threads. Just over queen c6. Oh, okay. Where's the finishing move? She only has 17 seconds. So white is winning, but she's down to 17 seconds. Yeah, queen e8 would be beautiful move, but it doesn't give anything <laughs> to check because the king can still move. So the queen has to stay yeah. here defending. Queen b7, though, would have been bad because of queen e8 and queen b7. Now bishop d3. Yeah, yeah. now yeah. bishop d3. And now bishop a6, and the game is over. Oh, oh. sorry, I'm opening windows. That I'm not supposed to. My menu on chess.com. <laughs> b3, interesting to attack the knight because that's covering the b6 square, but the c2 pawn it, starts it. advancing seven seconds left for Alina. Queen on the board takes on c1. That's a check. Um, still not over. Yeah, Bishop A6, maybe she was afraid of C takes B2 and she didn't want to give that uh, counter chance. But uh, yeah, material is still kind of, no, two extra pawns for uh, white. But yeah, it's still not over and eight seconds. Eight seconds is nothing when there's only a one second increment. So Elena has to convert this into football. But how will she? Wow. It it has gone out of control. Why it was in a clearly winning position and now the pieces are being traded. It still should be winning, but they have no yeah. time. No time. He takes he takes these six should be enough now. No? Oh, she takes with the queen. She takes with the queen. Why? He takes d6 yeah. was winning the piece, right? And that's what I thought so too, but we don't have time to go back. And now I just hope oh she's going okay, for she's the, going for the opponent uh, game. Yeah, at four g five, she can free move now, and yeah, she can easily. Win so this. she will win with a distant pass ball. This ball cannot be uh, caught. The blacking is way too far. She's trying. That yeah. was good. <laughs> if if I had free move, yeah, it was still working. Alina Danielian wins the first game of the match. She is the underdog in terms of ratings, but both players are grandmasters, having the overall grandmaster title. I saw a question in the chat earlier. If it's a woman grandmaster title, no, both players have the highest possible title in chess. So very strong players, the top players of their countries. Yeah, both of them. And once again, uh, um, Harika stays loyal to her uh, uh, reporter. C4 is on the board, but Elena again surprises with B6, E6, and F5 right now on the board uh, when Black manages to play f5. I actually like it for black. Usually, I think that uh, white has ways to avoid it um, and not to play g3, bishop g2. But against this uh, structure, I think this is very nice, active uh, way to handle it. Mm -hmm. It's good to see how they are trying to test different setups yeah. in the same opening. So we have seen the English opening. All three times it was a different approach against English by Alina. And now with a point lead, of course, this doesn't mean anything just yet. There's still 48 minutes left from the, the, the five plus one portion. Then we have an hour of yeah. three plus one and half an hour of bullet. So anything can still happen, but it's a good start. And she should be confident about her play. Yeah, exactly. And after 96, uh, one move that comes to my mind is bishop g5 with the idea of e5. Or directly e5 is uh, also interesting, I think, because knight e5 is not possible because of bishop uh, b7. But e5 uh, in this type of position is a big decision because we know that pawns don't go back and... Uh, the pawn might be a weakness and not strength. Yes, we get a gain e4 square, but uh, then we have to defend the e5 pawn. Though I would still go e5 and f4, but that's <laughs> just because of me and uh, because I like to attack. Uh, but um, I think uh, Harika is uh, correct. She doesn't go uh, and she takes it very slow with h3, king h2. Uh, bishop e3, queen d3, rook d1 might be uh, the plan, um, or queen c2, rook d1, and so on. Um, I don't know. I think that black is doing okay with the mm -hmm. open f file, rook f7, um, also defending the d7. Queen this is eight, an queen interesting yeah. queen maneuver, bringing the queen to h5, and then maybe 9g4, f4, as you said, and possibly e5. That's how white wants to expand. And 
before we continue with the game, I want to give a quick shout out to Grandmaster Ali Reza Firuza for the raid. Thank you so much. I did not realize it before. Shout out to one of the top players of Iran. He's a very talented prodigy played in the uh, the junior, junior chess championship, yeah. and you can root for him now on his channel too. He's one of the newest partners of chess.com. I didn't know that he started streaming that frequently, so make sure to go and see his channel now that he is a frequent streamer as well, and he may want to give a competition to Hikaru. Yeah, he's a great Blitz player as well, and uh, he, I, I have seen the uh, match, and I've seen that there was a question, who do you think is the greatest uh, uh, prodigy of mm -hmm. all time? And Ali uh, Firuza was one of the candidates, of course. So I can understand why. And the whole team of Iran, when they played the chess Olympiad all these past years, it feels like they are the youngest and very efficient team. They finished fifth yeah. in, in the Baku chess Olympiad, for instance. And their, I think age average was about 16, 17. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. They were called dark horses of the Olympiads. It's crazy <laughs> how talented and young uh, the Iranian players are. Yeah. Under 20, all of them nearly were, were under 20. Maybe only one player was uh, over 20. But now we have Women's Speed mm -hmm. Chess Championship, the first time in history that we have this uh, tournament. I'm very excited so far. Um, we had a lot of exciting matches, and we have now semifinals. We're getting closer to the finals. Who will uh, continue the uh, tournament? Who will get into finals? We will find out today. It will be Alina or Harika. Yeah, and mentioning the semifinals, we have the dates for the next semifinals too. That's going to be Alexandra Kostanyuk, Chess Queen versus Valentina Gunina, teammates in yeah. the Russian Olympic team, who will qualify from there. And one of today's players, plus in the match, Kostanyuk Gunina, we will see those two also, we'll need to fight for only one spot. It's a knockout yeah. system. If you are new here, there's $20,000 on the line. That's the price fund of the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Plus, the winner will get into the overall Speed Chess Championship, where Mr. Anish Giri is also a participant. And it's a ticket to, to the FIDE Grand Swiss tournament yeah. in the Isle of Man in October. So, so much that's at stake. So much. Yeah. That's incredible. And uh, that's really impressive also to be able to uh, play in the Grand Swiss Open uh, only 100 players, 1200 mm -hmm. players uh, are there. It's going to be amazing. I'm getting nervous. The finals <laughs> probably will be uh, super nerve-wracking for me. But okay, we have for now this position on the board. And uh, once again, I think that Alina is doing fine. Uh, the knight on d4 was a very good looking piece, but uh, it could be traded. So knight c6, giving up the d6 pawn, um, which is an extra pawn for white. I like that. It's free <laughs> stuff. And the queen is not trapped because queen e6 is possible, even though it doubles the e pawns. But white has the pair of vicious. I wish this vision was on d5 and not on g2. That's the oh, only yeah. thing. Oh yeah, I agree with you completely. It was um, it, it it was decision, of course, to uh, take on d6 because after rook d8, queen couldn't go anywhere. So rook queen e6 was uh, forced. It's not that um, white liked very much to have double pawns on tripled pawns on mm -hmm. e file, actually. Yeah, um, look at this pawn structure. Yeah, at this pawn on e6 probably will be lost, and then. I think I like black more because of the knight. Mm -hmm. And knight focused on the d4, g2, bishop is pretty passive. But uh, Harika is trying to get initiative on the c file. Rook c7, a very nice move. b4, I guess, um, is also a way to uh, oh, play. Oh, h4 to stop any expansion on the king side. b4, I like that idea to try to chase the knight away and aim for the a7 pawn. That makes a lot of sense because if the a7 pawn is vulnerable, then the b6 pawn falls yeah, too. Exactly. Though uh, probably she didn't play it because of rook d3 might have been a problem, but b4, b5 uh, was still something to think of. Knight d4, um, giving up a7 pawn, uh, but uh, attacking the e4 pawn. So mm -hmm. if rook a7, bishop e4, that's going to be also knight f3 and then bishop e4. 
Oh, Elena is doing really good. Yeah, it's a very exciting position because of the minor piece activity that Sofiko has outlined. The only thing is that once again, she's below on time. So it's a one minute time advantage for Harika. And we have seen that Elena did make some mouse slips, some big mistakes yeah. in her previous match, especially when it was only a few seconds left. So anything can happen, but so far it's actually a nice position for Black 2, although with pin hair threatening on G7, uh, <laughs> it's Bishop, problematic. Bishop D5 probably is the mm -hmm. only move uh, right now, and after Bishop D5, Rook D5, White can take on B6, but then Rook D2 is a problem. Uh, and now Rook E7 is nice, Rook D6 back though. Why not Rook 8 D6? Because mm -hmm. I wanted to have this mm -hmm. Rook 3 for Rook B5 or Rook D3 and so on. Um, yes, it's a good question. Why not moving the DH rook? She may have been afraid of some attacks on the back rank, but now it is White who has the initiative because of having two rooks on the seventh rank, pressure on the G7 pawn, pressure on the B6 pawn. And it's gonna be difficult for Elena to create enough counterplay. Although rook C2, that's a great idea. Rook C8 yeah. aiming for attacking the B2 pawn with a check. So if there's a capture, the only thing is that rook takes B6, later the E6 knight is in the air. King h3. Prophylactic. Uh, very nice prophylactic move. King f8 also nice because now you cannot take rook b6 mm -hmm. as there is uh, king d7 and after check king g8 I guess we will have a game maybe uh, maybe uh, per not perpetual but three uh, times repetition though. Uh, Harika has more time on the clock one minute uh, more, it looks like that it should be a draw, but oh, rook f7, d3, and yeah, you cannot do more than uh, checks, yeah. I guess. Black is threatening to promote him to moves, and the black, there's no way of stopping it, so it's gonna be a draw because of giving checks constantly on f7, e7, f7, g7, all those squares, yeah, rook e7, king d8, then you can come back and threaten mate with rook g8, it should be a draw. Yeah, rook e7, I can also play king f8 or king d8, king f8, it, it shouldn't be a problem. 17 seconds should be enough to... Um, oh, rook f1, Harika comes back. Rook f1, but then rook c2. She shouldn't over push it, I think, because d3 pawn is, is very dangerous. d3, d2, d2, rook c1 is a threat, so... Uh, Harika really is um, testing her luck here. Yeah, it's a pawn up for white, but it is black who is aiming to win now because of the threat that Sopiko has mentioned already. And without the rooks on the seventh rank and threatening mate with rook f7 check and then yeah. rook f7, this is looking great for black. Yeah, the only danger is that after rook c1, uh, rook c1 d2 should not be played because rook c8, mm -hmm. then rook d8, rook g8 is there. But rook c2, rook c2, and rook c7. She traded now to place the rook on the, the c7 square. It's a Tarash yeah. rook uh, protecting the c1 square. And now she can activate the king. So she actually found a way to continue the game. It's a one rook, rook end game, which is where white has winning chances. Yeah, it's impressive. And now um, and Elena wants to simplify it. She takes on uh b2 and takes on a3 i guess but these two pawns on uh, the king side they might be dangerous as the king is in a very good position king h6 white can uh just sacrifice the rook and uh then yep. uh, the g pawn oh elena almost flagged for 0 0.2 seconds when she made the move uh, and now she loses like. on time but the position is also winning yeah. for harika so kudos to the indian grandmaster for bouncing back Tying the score with a very well played end game. This wasn't yeah. easy at all. Yeah, exactly. And um, about uh, <laughs> we can see how relieved is uh, Harika. She was like, "Yeah, <laughs> this was the point I needed very much because so far the match has been tough for the Indian Grandmaster. We have now again a six on the board, but the difference is that c four is there. So." Um, this, this is a very um, annoying opening, I would say, <laughs> because um, as white, you think that, okay, what, what is this, seriously? Uh, 
you black cannot play like this but uh of course it's possible and um after uh a6 anything is uh possible for black like moves like bishop d6 bishop e7 castles uh also playing for c5 um uh, but and also bishop d6 castle and uh the normal cal cal but uh position but instead of c6 having a6 on the board at the same time i I am invading the chat, so I was trying to send some emotes that's me spamming the chat, and we are looking at the chat on Twitch and on Chess TV. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Women's Speed Chess Championship. This is the semifinals today and on Sunday. We are going to know today's winner and Sunday's winner will face each other in the final that is on the 27th of June and the main price. Well, overall price is $20,000, but with each round, the players advance, they are collecting more and more cash. And the title, as we mentioned, yeah. will give them a ticket to the overall speeches championship and to the Swiss tournament in the Isle of Man that is also for the qualification of the candidates. It's all just so much at stake. And thank you for being here with us. If you're not watching on Twitch, make sure to come to twitch.tv slash chess and hit the follow button. That's when you will be notified next time we go live with the broadcast. Make sure you do that. You don't want to miss any important rounds and matches and exciting tournaments going on. And what do we have? We have the normal Carlsbad on the board now with uh, C6 and A6. Rook e8, knight f8, um, and knight g6. We don't want to play at the moment, but black really wants to get uh, out of this pin, bishop h4, and um, queen d8. That's why queen uh, c7 is played. And uh, what black wants to do usually in this position is to trade the light squared bishop. So bishop uh, g4, h3, bishop f3 would not be played, but bishop h5. And to use the e4 square, usually black knights, black knight lands on e4, knight e4, and uh, if black is uh, possible, black is allowed to play knight f6, uh, then black is doing very fine. I'm curious how it will unfold, especially when, as Sopico mentioned, there are these different ideas quite aiming for a minority minority attack on the queen side, and black has the idea of placing the knight on e4. Also. Another alternative is when the knight comes toward the c4 square, so there are outposts. If black can make it to c4 in time and support it with a b pawn push, yeah. Uh, instead of knight b6, actually, uh, also common reply with b4 is to play b5 and then knight b6, knight c4. Though you should calculate well, what happens after a4. Uh, can you take it on b4 or not? I would play b5 because I like b4, b5, knight b6, knight c4. But what um, Alina, what uh, Harika did is also very fine, though. I would say that this particular endgame, I uh, find it a slight advantage for white. I also think that Alina is playing such positions um, in a very good way, uh, having the pawns on f3, g3, and ideas with g4, g5, once again, using the h file, I think mm -hmm. it's into oh, Alina's there we go. style. There we go, g4 is on the board. Yeah, it, I think it's into Alina's style, and uh, so far she gets what she wants. Mm -hmm. b5, trying to fix the structure on the queen side, may look strange, because it weakens the c6 form, but if the knight makes it to c4, then actually the c5 will be covered and it hides the weakness on c6. So that's the aim, getting the knight to c4 and trading it for the bishop. Yeah, rook h5 uh, was very much expected. Rook h5, rook h1, and g5 is uh, one of the plan that white can uh, play here. But first, she has to, um, I think she has to defend the a3 pawn. No, Alina goes for direct attack, giving mm -hmm. up the a3 pawn, uh, saying that, you know what, you don't have time to uh, get that pawn. And you have to do something about uh, your king, because if you take on g5, then I'll double on h file, and I'm going to mate you. Let's see what exactly will happen, but I also think that Harika will not have the time to grab this pawn, because once the queen moves, that will attack the knight, so that gains a tempo. Rookie three, can I play rookie three though? Woo! Tactics. No, no, I can't. Play. Does it because bishop c4. Bishop c4. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be nice. I'm just gonna show it quickly. That Sophie's idea was 
to try to win the queen with a fork on e3, it would work if there was no such thing as eliminating the knight and then taking the rook. Yeah. Um, so rook e6 was played instead, and after doubling an h file, king f8, king runs to the safer side. Yeah, trying to get to the queen side. Actually, it would be way safer on b7 in yeah. this moment. Yeah. Will she get there? Will she manage to bring the king there? Um, uh, probably she will, but she might lose the h6 pawn meanwhile, because after queen c1, we protect the a3 pawn, and bishop f5 is very annoying uh, mm -hmm. threat. Also, uh, queen c1 is very nice move. It gets out of all kind of tactics connected with knight e3, rook e3, knight a3, and so on. It really looks bright for white here. Yeah, once again, Alina is doing a great job in this game, but what a match both players are bringing their A game. We don't see big mistakes. It's a really classy... Oh, nice. wait. So, counterattack. Bishop f5 attacking the rook. G6 saying, your rook is also hanging, and it's a fork. That was a trap. That was a very nice trap because bishop f5 on king e7 is kind of uh, like pre-move. Bishop e6 and gh. Yes, black loses the uh, pawn. Uh, if No, she doesn't lose because she can take on g5 right now. And after rook h5, we will have same uh, material. I still uh, like for white because I think that the bishop is better. Uh, but if black manages to put uh, her king uh, onto a safer side, and then create something uh, on the king side, then it might be not so easy anymore for white. White gives yeah. up the d4 pawn. Whose king will be weaker? I don't know, but I don't. I did. I didn't like that d4 pawn was lost after queen g5, queen f6. I don't see that uh, much problems for uh, white for black. Sorry, queen. Queen g8 is a nice move. Uh, rook h8 is uh, the threat, and mm -hmm. uh, queen d8, queen e8, and a lot of things. Yeah, threat how made on those two squares. Well, d8 to... would be made, and e8 almost yeah. made. How to, and queen f8 also. So, yeah, <laughs> there are the whole back, right? Yeah. <laughs> there are, Easier. <laughs> there's lots of uh, things to consider. But most important for black now is uh, to eliminate the threat of mate with rook h8. If I play rook h8 right now, does she want to take on f8, knight of uh, f5, five, sorry, knight of five, queen d8, king e6. I cannot take on c7, unfortunately, because after uh, check, um, the rook is hanging still on h8. So Elena goes for uh, rook h8, knight of five. Let's Should see, I give check? See. Yeah, there's check on d8 or on e8. Both are possible. Rook now the, e8. The check. rook is hanging, but also the... Oh, what am I doing? I'm trying to draw an arrow here. Yeah. This rook would be hanging too, so why rook cannot take check. on c7? That's yeah. right. Or ef. Or ef. That's very interesting, because if I take e takes f5 check, she should take with the king. Mm -hmm. um, then I can oh, play rook h5. Here. Yeah, I think so. These check are the two options better. that Sophie mentioned check on e8 or e takes f5 check. Both were critical, but there's no time for calculating much. Only a minute left for both players, a minute yeah. and 20 seconds for Elena. Elena is up on time yeah. for the first time in the match. Yeah, Elena is doing very good after also the position looks very good for her after queen uh, c7. She has an uh, exchange, so she can now trade the queens. As we know, when you have extra material, it's uh, way Way easier to trade pieces and simplify the position because then the defender will have less pieces. So oh, uh, and can... Elena won because it's yeah. an exchange up and the queens are getting traded. So one more time, Elena Danielian takes the lead in the match. Yeah, uh, one point lead for Elena Danielian. The match is very close, and I'm very happy that uh, we have this kind of match with Elena playing. You always have such feeling that okay, you can never relax because mm -hmm. Elena also had two point lead against uh, Katarina in the first match. Then Katarina had the mm -hmm. two point lead. So it was like going back and forth. And the last game in the bullets uh, portion was decisive. That mm -hmm. where Elena won and mm -hmm. she qualified to the semifinals. And for Harika, this is new that the match starts in a way that she is struggling to 
tie the score because against Marie, she took the lead not at the not clearly at the very beginning, but it was way it was uh, it felt like she had the full control of the match because she won both the five plus one yeah. section, then the three plus one, and only the bullet was where she didn't prevail. But by that time, she already had so much of an advantage, so many yeah. points collected, she didn't need to win the bullet. So yeah. she will have to somehow bounce back and try to win the five plus one portion if she wants to have the control of the match as she did against Marie. Yeah, um, I agree with you. And uh, so far, actually, we are having great match because there was no big blunder. I uh, I cannot even say that there was a blunder because there were a lot of tactical motives. The games were very instructive from the uh, strategic point mm -hmm. of view, from the tactical point of view as well. And what do we have now on the board is also very sharp uh, double fianchettos. Um, I like it for white just because I like the bishops on g2 and b2. Me too. But uh, I think that black has um, enough play to... Uh, find the counterplay. Yes, and White hasn't advanced her pawns yet, the D and E pawns. If you find the right moment to advance those pawns and have the good stand draw control that usually we all aim for in a chess game, then it will be very nice for White. At the same time, Black has a nice outpost on D5, not a traditional outpost, but the nice is standing very well on D5, and this is a semi-open D and E files for Black. So, so far, this is a dynamic position, slight advantage, for white i just want to give a quick reminder to everyone out that we have a question of the day that is about the strongest chess playing families and families can mean anything it can mean brothers sisters married couples and or if the parents play the children play as well make sure to come up with as many solutions as possible there's no one single solution to this question but you can tweet us your answer by using the hashtag speeches and another request, if you're already on Twitter, we do have a poll about next Monday. That's going to be the Arena Kings Mystery Monday. And make sure to cast your vote on what format, what chess variant shall the players go for. So that's also on Twitter, on chess.com's Twitter account. Yeah, make sure you follow her and you do all what she's saying because it's very important. <laughs> um, and after D4, we have A5. Um, and e4 shall we go for e4 or we shall not close the uh another bishop on mm -hmm. uh, g2 that's a big question i think that it's a uh, right decision to go uh, for e4 because we don't like this knight on d5 it's very annoying because the knight is very strong there and after e4 d4 white uh can have some tactical ideas connected with d5 or f4 f5 we should somehow bother um, bother black. Hmm. F4. I would play F4 here, though. Um, I, I like that. I think white has to be ready for some kind of um, counterattack in the center with C5 or B5. Then, then D5 is always D5. a question. Yeah. yeah, so C5 is something that black would love to play. The question will be whether white can push D5. And F4, F4, F5. That looks very promising if there's no counterattack by black to that hit. Yeah, I think this is the kind of big difference into uh, styles that chess players have because uh, when I see something very exciting or something like connected with the attack, having F4, F5, G4, and so on, I think I have it for my mom because she's always uh, pushing her pawns <laughs> in front. Uh, so it's genetic, but it's not always good. Uh, but Harika is more like kind of solid. She likes end games very much. If you and... compare the players, you're like Alina in playing style with yeah. the attacks and I'm like Harika. That's what Sophie Cohen is describing. Yeah. It. I'm really looking forward to that rook end game, but <laughs> I'm not sure we will get there in this game. But tactics, after knight e5, bishop e5, bishop d5, can't we take bishop d5, then bishop g7? Woo! Tactics, yes. Uh, bishop g7 didn't work because of bishop g7. Now we <gasps> get rook and game. game. <laughs> Opposite colored bishop and game, yes. <laughs> this is my dream. There's no attack anymore. Why play f4, f5, and you can play an opposite colored bishop and game and, and make, make a draw? draw. <laughs> 
yeah, this was a fun game. We are just teasing the players a little bit because it was a very well fought game, to yeah. be honest. And it wasn't that simple. So F4, F5 was a promising idea for White, but it wasn't a winning position. Nowhere near it was that much of an advantage for White. Yeah. I agree with you, though. I would still play a four there, so I would still tell her, come on, go for a four. <laughs> Next game. Next, Next game. game, yeah. Maybe in this game we'll see a four and G4. It's Alina and H4. <laughs> <laughs> True. Alina is a more aggressive player. H4, H5. But now Alina <laughs> is playing... Uh, no, actually now Harika is changing and she goes instead of D4, D5, she goes for D4, D6. Knight of three, G6. Both of these players, they are super familiar with the perk defense. Both of them, they uh, have it in their repertoires. Mm -hmm. They used it a lot of times in the classical games mm -hmm. as well. And uh, I think that it's very nice opening for the Blitz. But I think that if white player is very well prepared against perk white has advantage i agree with you i also go oftentimes for this setup where it's knight f2 knight c3 h3 and cross looking side it's a very solid approach against the pick so i don't think it refused the pick defense but white has a slightly better position because of having more space a4 aiming to stop black from pushing b5 and expanding on the queen side yeah exactly the way i love to play against uh perk is uh to trade the uh dark squared bishop as fast as possible so i'm not going for this solid h3 bishop e3 but instead i want to play bishop g5 queen d2 bishop h6 and create some attack on the king side as uh fast as possible but this is also um another way uh, to uh, play against perk and this is uh, way more solid it's you take more time you get minor pluses here and there you use the space advantage as well uh, and you just enjoy enjoy the uh, space advantage and for black it's uh, very difficult to um, get uh, with the uh, plan uh, come up with the plan because mm -hmm. once uh, you're not allowed to play b5 then you have to do something to um, develop your pieces because the c8 bishop is not a good piece. Yeah, and for the development of the c8 bishop, b6, bishop b7 is a common idea. And taking on d4 in the right moment, that's something that Black has in her hands to open up the e5, open up the long diagonal and get a square for the knight to jump to. Yeah, and de, um, the question is, is it the right moment to take on e5? Uh, before playing uh, rook d1, as Grandmaster Anish Kiri always tells me that first mm. you have to uh, put all your pieces into the center and Listen then Anish. go for action. First, maybe maybe on the right square. Maybe, maybe <laughs> first, let's take note. First, <laughs> our pieces need to go to the right squares yes. and then you take action. I hope that you're listening to the world number four because he's helping the broadcast by taking care of Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, very important. <laughs> Otherwise, Danny would come here and he would say, yeah, you have to go with the knight. That, that's uh, that's the intuition he has. Like He likes knights. Like his He likes knights. Mm. And he also likes streaming, at least <laughs> as I saw on your Instagram. Guys, Finally, Sofiko has an Instagram account. This is just a quick shout out to oh. Sofiko's Instagram. She's in a race to try to yeah. have more followers than Anish. Yeah. So it's very important that you support her. Exactly. That I just created the Instagram account just to have more followers uh, than him and to do like. <laughs> Help her do that. <laughs> How do her do that? There's a pin on the C5 which allows knight jumps such as knight d5, knight d5. So black moves out of the C5 and now white is aiming to double rooks, but rook d8 comes in the right moment. Some pressure by white because of the queen here and the d5. But once again, what matters apart from the position is that you follow Sophie on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're always so nice. I thought it was a very subtle hint. All right, it was very subtle. I'm, I'm not shouting so that Anish can hear it too. <laughs> He's in the living room. Or, or we'll just be kicked out from here. But back to chess. Um, I don't understand why people play Peric. You don't. The most you can get is 
such position which is like you're really fighting for equality all yeah. the game why there are so many openings that <laughs> you, that gives you equality play berlin <laughs> But Black is not doing badly anymore. She's got the d5, the knight is going toward d4, and this bishop, yeah, yeah it's close, but it's a, a strong and ghetto, even like this, because it's supposed to be 5 4. Yeah, I agree with you in uh, this sense. Knight e6 and knight d4 is something to take care of. Uh, Queen c4, it puts a bit of pressure on c6 pawn, but. Um, White doesn't have any more pieces to uh, use these weaknesses and to um, attack. Mm -hmm. So go for bishop g5, queen d2, bishop h6, and go for mate against Birk. <laughs> it did not happen, and now we are seeing an endgame that's likely to be a draw if it wasn't the blitz game, because now this knight on d4 is dangerous. So because said that's her favorite piece, and I agree. This is a dangerous monster, and that's why White takes it before knight f3 could have happened. Yeah, but taking it, it gives uh, black. I think that somehow the tables might turn because after e takes d4, the bishop suddenly is mm -hmm. a very nice piece protecting the d4 pawn. Also having ideas of creating uh, three against one maybe with d3, bishop uh, d2. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what white should try and probably what's uh, white's best thing to do is to play for f4 e5 to close this bishop, but uh, I don't think that white has time for that. She plays king g2, it's a good idea in general to get your yeah. king into a safer square, g2 stands better uh, for the white king and h7 stepping out of the diagonal so that the f1 can be pushed. I'm not sure though that back will find the right moment for a move like f5 because that tears up the the seventh rank. Yeah. And by placing the king on h7, the f7 pawn is more vulnerable. So pros and cons for both king moves. Yeah. Um, and both of them are having two minutes. Uh, they are both managing time uh, very well. Uh, I think both of them, they are in good shape uh, so far. Yes, uh, Elena is ahead in the match with one point, but we know that it does not mean anything because we have, first of all, 14 minutes left mm -hmm. for uh, five plus one mm -hmm. uh, second uh, portion. Then we have one hour of three plus one. And then the most exciting bullet portion, we have half an hour and that's where things can go wrong. Indeed, so this, this match is nowhere near decided. And actually, it's smarter chess. Uh, I think he was really right about the prediction that it was going to be a very close match. The prediction was one for point Harika. advantage in 5 plus 1 for Harika yeah. and one, one point advantage also in 3 plus 1 for Harika. And then Elena would win the bullet. But apart from that, I think depending on what segment and how we don't know the thing is, the two players are so strong and so well prepared for an online chess competition. They yeah. practice for hours and hours on chess.com playing bullet, especially online and getting used to the platform and used to playing chess online. They do play online a lot, but they they were not familiar with the match format and the three plus one, five plus one, flight one plus one. Yeah, and they had a lot of time uh, to prepare for this match because uh, already the opponents uh, were known weeks before, so they were, I'm sure they were uh, for hours playing on chess.com bullet and three plus uh, one uh, portion as well. And we can see because uh, it feels that they are, uh, they have a lot of experience with uh, time. They are managing time very well and there are no big blunders so far. That is the main factor that in the first matches when the players were not familiar with a match format we did see players hanging a rook a queen elena herself mouse hanging. lips yeah mouse lips are so common in online chess in general even even when you see the overall speed chess championship there are mouse lips yeah but not in this match so far and no big wonders either so yes both players are so focused and that's why you see them leaning toward the screen so i i have seen some of the comments about why they don't adjust the camera. The cameras are usually inbuilt cameras in laptops yeah. where the players play from. So when they focus, they lean toward the screen. 
and we don't want to disturb them by telling them, hey, can you please sit back so that we can look at your face perfectly? Thank you so much. That's not <laughs> the way to deal with players. So we do let them sit the way they want. And when they sit up, you can see them perfectly. But when they focus, well, some players yeah. lean toward the screen. Yeah, and that's usually what players are doing when you're uh, more focused. You want to, you're like, you want to get into computer maybe and just uh, mm -hmm. play it on the board. Yeah. And playing it on the board now with this bishop on e5 and knight on d5. Is it the knight or is it the bishop that will better? I like this knight outpost, but the bishop is putting pressure on g3 pawn. Yeah, f4 probably will be the next move. Bishop g7. And now the question is um, if white can play e5 or not, is it necessary to play e5 or not? b4, I like that very much. Uh, changes the uh, pawn structure. Mm -hmm. Queen e6, another good move, uh, provoking e5 because you don't want to play king f3 because of queen g4 check. And after e5, if you take b takes uh, c takes b4, mm -hmm. which happened, queen d4, I think, uh, will be the move. A more important pawn than the b pawn because that leaves double pawns for yeah. black, isolated pawns. Knight and now this knight is, is beautiful. The queen, the combination of the queen and the knight. Yeah, knight of six is a big threat now, winning the uh, mm -hmm. queen. It, it is a very nice move. Queen c6, we couldn't take uh, knight b4 because uh, it was pinned. Now queen e4, there is uh, another uh, big, big um, threat of knight of six. And Elena won pawn, actually. Actually won a nice second only ahead. for Harika. Yeah. So she is controlling the time situation as well. 17 seconds for Elena, eight seconds for Harika. There's only a one second increment. Anything can happen at this point of the game. Yeah, anything can happen because of the time. It's not very easy for white to um, convert to the extra pawn because we have four against three and you need to open up uh, to get something going on. Uh, best would be to trade queens, of course, because then key but black prevented four three. seconds left. Yes. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Oh. 95. It looks very, very good for white, but time. Time is important. 98 back to F6. She can uh, gain some seconds, but so if she does it, moves, yeah. three time repetition. And even though Alina had a pawn up, she couldn't activate the queen because queen g1 was a threat as well. So that's why she repeated moves and went yeah. for a draw. Yeah, it was very uh, fair decision, fair repetition. Now again, we have English opening c4 and e5. Alina already tried this in uh, the second or third third game, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, uh, and now a3 is a move that I also like to play. Uh, before playing uh, e3 or g3, you don't want to um, show sure, yeah. a3. Mm -hmm. You kind of keep uh, mm -hmm. all options open. And it's um, it's a useful move because mm -hmm. you always want to play b4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Sophie could describe, it's a flexible move. It's not the most uh, common, but it has its idea of keeping the option of g3 and e3 both possible. And black has to react to the pawn push first, the a3 move first. And it's not just that it's a waiting move. It is a useful move because it covers the b4 screen. Oftentimes, white wants to push b4, rook b1 aiming to push. And here we go, b4 on the board, a takes, a takes, and b5 is a possibility. Yeah. The common mistake I, I was doing when I was little uh, was that against um, English, I would, uh, of course, want to play uh, f5, e5. Oh. And I would want to have some kind of attack on the king side. But I would also want to stop the b4. So I would play the combination of f5 and a5. And I was losing all my games. And my coach was like, Okay, just once, believe me, there is no combination. It is not a good combination of having both F5 and A5 on the board. If you play well, A5, you should forget F5. And if you play F5, you should forget A5 and let the pawns roll on the queen side. That's, Elena definitely knows that. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't played F5. <laughs> she hasn't played F5. So we, in this uh, position, at some point, we might see f5. That that was not the um, yeah. We see f5. Yeah, now it's already time there. for it. So yeah. it moves later. I think what Sopika was describing that in the opening, you can't really in the middle game. <laughs> it it's just 
if you try it too early to push both f5 and a5, you will not be able to control both sides of the board. But now black is aiming to push f1, create a kingside attack, f4 or g5, f4. So by pushes f4 to stop the f1. Exactly. And I read a question, Sopico, who was your coach? Oh. I had a lot of coach. Everybody uh, who has uh, the surname ending on Shvili in Georgia <laughs> was <laughs> where my coach is. <laughs> and currently your coach is Shvili. Yeah, <laughs> we can say Girimishvili. Girimishvili. <laughs> or maybe you are his coach. It's not clear who is coaching who. Yeah. That's true. If he plays good, I'm his coach. Yeah. If he draws, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Mentioning Anish Giri, we have a daily question as usual. And the question is today something that is related to Sopico, but she is not the only solution to that question. Come up with the strongest chess families in history. Use the hashtag speeches to tweet us who were the strongest brothers, sisters, or entire families that have played chess in the entire history of chess. Yeah, and actually there are a lot of candidates for that. So you have to think twice before you answer because you might forget somebody. We have Ooh. sisters, brothers, father, son, and yeah. so on. For and example, Carlson. Oh, yeah, Minus had all the sisters of Minus play chess. His father also plays chess. Add up the rating and make an average rating. Exactly. Do that. And we're back to chess. Uh, what happened? What happened in this game is that there is no use of A file <laughs> because all the squares, A2 and A3 important squares are um, covered. But maybe we can play Rook A1 to, uh, trade, the to trade the Rook and uh, then try to do something on the background. No tactics. Woo! Tactics. Wait, I need because to replay. Because 91, 91 is the uh, point. Bishop A3, no. Wait. Bishop A3, 91 is not there. So it's not possible because the rook is protecting the UN square. So Maybe E4 is on? an she, intermediate. Or move? she wants to take and then uh, yeah. both the bishop and the knight are hanging. So it's a trade of rooks in a funny way. And she has captured the pawn in the meantime. Yeah, she has captured the pawn in the meantime. Then if one pawn is lost, uh, the problem with this opening is that there's a chain of pawns and this, they're going to be lost. Uh, also, c4 pawn is very weak. Uh, so after knight d3, I don't know what's uh, knight d3 maybe. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have a move. Bishop yeah, takes e4. e4 to attack the queen. And then now knight takes. takes. Yeah, now takes. And it's an extra pawn, I guess. Because if we get back, if we go, let's say, bishop b2, then we can go, for example, bishop b2 or knight g4. Both mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. knight g4 is possible. Escaping with a knight, so it's an extra pawn for Alina. And she's up with a point in the match. She can now get an other point before the blitz portion, the 5 plus 1 is over. We have only just over three minutes left from this segment. If this game doesn't finish in three minutes, then we will not see more games with yeah. five plus one. This could be the final game before we go for the three plus one. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> we are just halfway through. Yeah, a lot of games ahead. So far, I think that Alina is playing great chess. Both of them are playing very good chess. Both of them are in good shape. But Alina, somehow I feel she's kind of dominating in this uh, five plus one portion because she had uh, many good games uh, that were in her favor mm -hmm. and it ended in a draw. Yeah, now there was a trade on f6 so that Harika wants to have a strong knight on d5 that was threatening to trade and attacking the c7 pawn to put pressure on that uh, base of the pawn chain. She's trying to compensate for the pawn and she's doing well so far because it's a close position where the knight is a strong piece and she's trying to hide the king on h3 so that there are no threats on the second rank. Yeah, which is very smart. And uh, now the problem is how to convert the extra pawn. Because if there was no extra pawn, then we could shake hands and make draw. But there is extra pawn. So the ideas with connected with c6, d5, d4 are, of course, there. Also, problem for white is that this knight, they, it 
doesn't have four passes. So knight d5 is kicked with c6. And after taking, taking knight b6 probably. But then after rook a3, black is for sure doing very good. Rook a3, rook d3, putting pressure on e3. Then going uh, and playing for d5, d4. Looks very good for well, black. Yeah, Alina up a pawn, taking the initiative now, and she's up also on time. So one more time, it's a minute advantage. She started the match somewhat slower and less sure of her decisions, but now she's also fully in charge of her time management. Yeah, she is doing great. She has two minutes, uh, a minute more on clock, and it means a lot because uh, when you're under pressure and when time is ticking, you think that, okay, I have to convert. Uh, the pawn and you want to play more active where blunders might come. Mm -hmm. But in this position, uh, Elena has a lot of time to think how to do it uh, correctly, um, what, when to play what. So she is, it, it looks very good for her simply. Queen C7 maybe. Queen C7 right to attack the knight and also protect the pawn. This is going to be the last game since it's only a few seconds left from this portion. That means that after this game, there will be a short break for the players. And then we're going to see an hour of the three plus one, that is three minutes with one second increment. And after that, half an hour of bullet. Exactly. We see the class in this game with not after queen c7, not playing rook b1, but uh, first c5. And of course, dc5 would be a second extra pawn for black, but then it would give c4 par four cost uh, to the white knight. And if white blocks the uh, c pawns, then there is nothing to play for. So c5, d5 was the correct mm -hmm. decision. And now black is putting the pressure on c5 pawn because it doesn't have... Um, uh, it doesn't have defenders. What White is trying is she's trying to activate her uh, pieces just to get some kind of counterplay. Rook g7, queen b2, as uh, Anna drew the arrows now, are uh, the um, are the threats. How to deal with them? Queen of fate, maybe. Yeah, because this pin is annoying. So if I can get queen b2 and white, it does not matter that I'm a pawn down. Probably that will be... Oh, okay, she's taking on e3. Yeah, queen g3 was... Uh, queen threat. g3 was a bigger threat, but there was no time for queen b2. That makes perfect sense. And now that means already three extra pawns for Elena. She's up a point in the match, and she's about to win a second game. But anything can happen when the players are down to a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, but I think that this is way too easy for uh, Black because you just push the pawns and that's She's losing it. the bishop though, but D2, rook D3 is... Yeah, the D passed pawn is already way too strong. So even if she drops the bishop, the yeah. pawn promotes. Yeah, just she should not get into perpetual. So King F7 is the right thing to do. And after D2... Rook d8 or rook b1, rook e1, rook d8, rook d3, the game is over. Yep, the pawn promotes and that a new queen on the board. Only 18 seconds left for Harika, but that's just enough time for her to realize that there's no escape because the f8 knight cannot stop the d pawn and only the rook with rook b1, rook e1, or rook d8, yeah. rook d3. Harika resigns and that means a two point lead. For Elena Danielian, this was the last game of the 5 plus 1. We will go for a quick break, and then we are back with an hour of 3 minutes plus 1 second, and then the bullet, the most exciting portion. Make yeah. sure to stay here with us and tweet us, responding to the question of the day. See you in a few minutes. See you soon.
Chess.com is about playing. At any moment, there are thousands of people from around the world playing on Chess.com. So whether you're a total beginner or a grandmaster, you'll find a game quickly with someone at your level. You can play at any pace, from one minute bullet, to five minute blitz, to 60 minute games. Or you can play more relaxed games where you have several days to make your move. There are tournaments starting every few minutes. Or you can play against our customizable coaching computer. Chess.com is for learning. Chess isn't just about playing, it's about getting better. Chess.com puts the best training tools at your fingertips. Sharpen your game with over 50,000 tactics puzzles. Improve your strategy with training videos by top grandmasters. Get instant feedback after your games with real-time computer analysis. Regardless of where you're at now, you can take your game to the next level. Chess.com is for sharing. Join the community where you can discuss chess ideas in the forums and follow the latest chess news, or join a club with friends and play in a league against other clubs. You can find all this in your browser at home and at work, or on the go with your phone or tablet. Signing up is free and easy. So what are you waiting for? Enjoy your game. Welcome back to the broadcast. This is the semifinals of the Women's Speak Chess Championship between Harika Dronavali and Elena Danielian, where the underdog, Elena, has taken a two-point lead. And now we are about to start the three-minute plus one-second portion. So, Pico, how do you see the match so far? Wow, it, it was really amazing because uh, we haven't seen any big blunders. We were not scared, like, woo, uh, the usual uh, screaming. But I, I think that the match is uh, going to be still very close. I think that Harika needs to do something to uh, get back into the match. So far, I felt that Alina is putting a lot of pressure on her. She's managing openings better than mm -hmm. uh, Harika, and she's managing time very nicely as well. I agree with you, and we shall see how Harika will try to bounce back. She's a very solid player, so it's not her style to go all out and go for bold attacks, but maybe she will need to change a little bit of her approach, especially since the time control is becoming shorter and shorter. The, I think the shorter the time control, the more likely that if you go for some kind of a tricky variation, dangerous positions, you are maybe more likely to score but also you take more danger it yeah. may fire may it may backfire and then the gap between the two players will become bigger yeah i agree with you and now we will have three plus one portion for coming hour and then we'll have for half an hour bullet now we will see what players prepared for uh, each portion so far harika sticks to the uh, d4 d6 she tried in the five plus one portion d4 d5 she definitely needs to do something she's playing right now the uh learning road variation if, if i'm not mistaken i'm very bad in opening names but uh after c4 i think we um uh we transposed into the main line of leningrad variation c4 queen c2 94 with early 94 i um I have to say that I like it for white once again because of uh, space. The thing uh, for black is playing here for is queen e8, e5, or direct e5, and create some uh, sort of counterplay on the king side, but um, she's giving up the d file, and white is ahead in development. That will be the question whether, for instance, this bishop and this rook will make it to the game because after e5, the position may start opening up and that will favor white, but e5 at the same time has to be played to start taking control of the center. Otherwise, it would be just very comfortable for white. Exactly. After e5, um, de5 happened, yep. de5, and uh, I think rook d1 might follow, rook fd1, uh, probably not to um, plunder any kind of tactics uh, connected with e4 and bishop g7, ef, and then fg hmm. takes uh, two. It probably doesn't work, but just to get oh, rid of it. Nice idea. Is, so if it's nice. jack traded on d5, then it creates a strong pawn on d5 for white, and the e5 pawn will drop. Knight e7 or knight b4 would attack the pawn, but there are ideas also with bishop a3 or a capture this position. When the position is opening up and black pieces are still in the background, that's usually not a good sign. So queen e5, it's a nice idea. 
Yeah, queen d5, king h8 played, and then uh, after a uh, check, White traded queen d8, rook d8, and e4. That's also a very uh, common uh, way to treat f5, e5, because if f takes e4, then it would be terrible. Uh, pawns uh, and white would get the e4 square, and after f4, white wants to play uh, for the d file. Uh, as well as we can uh, try now to compare the pieces, uh, b2. G bishop is definitely better mm -hmm. than the g7 bishop, but on the other hand, uh, white black will have uh, a very good square four post for the knight on uh, d4. Mm -hmm. Bishop f3, bishop f3. But I do think that Harika has to do something, maybe change her uh, opening repertoire because the, uh, with uh, two points down, uh, she gets uh, such positions where white, either white has slight advantage and black is trying to equalize, um, or it's just an endgame where it's not so easy to overtake and uh, get the initiative. How many times have we seen so far <laughs> the opposite color bishops on the board? Because it's striking again. I e5. love these endgames so much. I would play e5 right now. E5, in yeah. if they open up the long diagonal for the bishop taking on b7 with a temple, but also the g3 pawn is hanging after the yeah. moves. Though bishop d5 maybe is the point, and after bishop g3, you have to be careful not to play rook d4 uh, right away because c6 is uh, a problem and white will lose the uh, white will lose the bishop. So I was saying that Harika has to change something and not play the end games. But look at this; she just won a pawn, and there is tactic. Black cannot, white cannot take on d4, um, and if white can take on d4, yes, it is opposite colored bishop. But rooks are still on the board, which gives black uh, more chances to convert the extra pawn. Very well explained, and yes, she's sticking to her style, but maybe this is what she should do, and she shouldn't go crazy for wanting to go for an aggressive attack and trying to get that point and two point to bounce back too much in yeah. that, in something that wouldn't be along the way she treats chess positions in general. So yeah, this is very instructive how she went for a solid position, solid approach, and even like this, she's going for a win. Yeah. Exactly. And after King G2, now white is threatening to take on D4 because there is no more bishop C5 uh, pin and there is no more C6. So black has to do something about it. Bishop C5 would drop C7 pawn. Bishop E5 you don't really want to play because then the bishop is passive. So rook E8 is a very active approach. Uh, and if uh, rook d4, then after rook E2, you cannot play rook f2 because after the trade, again, Bishop c5 would be the problem. So I'm going to that's show a very it. nice trick by Harika. That's a skewer and wins material and the game. So rook takes d4 is a mistake if you want to play rook f2 after rook e2 check. In the game after rook e8, bishop f3 happened to protect the e2 square. It's a prophylactic move, and now white wants to take on d4. Yeah, now bishop e5, because if c5, then a7 pawn would be uh, dropped. But after bishop e5, uh, indeed rook e1 or rook d7 was also something to uh, think about. Um, white, white, I think, has uh, good chances to um, hold this. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of the opposite card bishops. And that now they are actually repeating moves because... The bishop is not really comfortable with this pressure. Yeah, over bishop c6 is uh, a threat. A different move, d3. So uh, it is Harika who is pushing. But after rook d7, bishop d6, a smart move to close the d5. Still, this pawn is vulnerable now that it has been pushed to d3. Yeah, it is. Though c5, we can take on d3 right now. And after uh, taking, um, there is two against one on the king side which is extra pawn, but we have opposite colored bishop and there is nothing uh, much for white. Though seven seconds for um, Elena, which might mean something and might give hopes to uh, Harika because uh, it's not easy to play any kind of position when you have five seconds on the clock. Five seconds, that's terrible. There's only a one second increment. Anything can happen because even if the position is not so difficult, oh, trade of rooks. In the for a bishop, yeah, I, that would be strange. I thought that taking and 
king f3, king e4 would be uh, very sure. easy for uh, white because two keeping, seconds the rooks, only. Oof. keeping the rooks, two seconds. What if you have to play rook e2 at some point, give a check and flag. <laughs> Dirty flag, look at you. So oh, the rook. Oh. You see, this this is it. One move oh, blunder. Okay. The first one move blunder of the yeah. match. Actually, kudos to the players for having played a full yeah. five plus one portion without big blunders. But rook f8 just hanging the rook in one move. That was Elena's last move. She was under serious time pressure. And the position exactly. Um, yeah, that, that was the moment my husband needed very much because she he was asking me, like, how's the match going? He's not able to follow it because he's uh with Daniel. And I was like, Yeah, it's very good. There are no big blunders. And he was like, Yeah, I see that. There I didn't hear any screams. <laughs> I'm sure you. So that he is not following. We do have a daily question. The question was about, and it is still a question that if you want to respond to, what are the strongest chess playing families in history or who is the strongest chess playing family if we want to find the one and only? I don't think it's easy to find the one. So let's yeah. make a list of very strong chess families. And one of the answers was sent in by none other than Sopiko's husband, oh, Anish Giri. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he tweeted, different question, same answer, Jordan Fan Forest. Hashtag speeches, hashtag too easy. <laughs> Jordan is also to, about to play in a few days his next match in the Junior Speeches Championships. I'm assuming that Anish is rooting for Jordan in that match. But he also comes up with the very true fact that the Fun Forest family is a very strong one too. Yeah, Fun Forest family, actually, I think every family member there is a chess player. <laughs> and all of the brothers and sisters, they are very strong. Lucas Fun Forest, and even the little sister, she is very strong. She is already, yeah. I think, eight or nine years old. And she is over 2000, if I'm not mistaken. I heard that she may be the biggest talent in the family. So careful, Jordan and Lucas, because the little sister may take over. Yeah, exactly. And what happens in this game? We had the same opening with uh, C4, B4 uh, trade. Uh, but instead of uh, w w when the trade happened on D5, instead of knight D5, C takes D5 happened. And this is what we got. Um, I like it for uh, white for now, but I think that the e4 knight and the probably uh, after rook c8, black has enough play to equalize the this game. Trade on b6 that opens the a5 for the rook, so it doubles the pawn but gives the a5 to an undeveloped piece. In this sense, it's already an active piece on a8. F3, knight d6. Uh, probably, and after knight d6, knight can jump to c4, knight c4, but white will have some uh, ideas connected with e4, rook c2, rook c1. Is this the time when we will see that Harika is bouncing back because she won uh, the previous game? She's still one point down, but she uh, she's playing very nice so far. She's getting these minor advantages uh, everywhere in the center, uh, on the queen side. Can she convert this one? This is looking like, once again, a promising position for Harika, and she's sticking to her. her style. Interesting choice to go in that direction with the knight. Now she's going back to f2 and from there to d3. Uh, yes. Yeah, could have gone the other way as well, but we shall see what her plan is exactly. Bishop f5 is annoying because it affects both the rook and the e3 pawn, but e4 just in the right moment to push weakens the d4 square, so it has its consequences that yeah. white has to deal with afterwards. Yeah, and uh, the thing is that white cannot take, probably black cannot take knight e4 because after rook e1, uh, that would be a pin, although knight d4 would be, uh, rook d4 could be. Um, Law, uh, could be played, but rook e2 is there, so rook d4 and rook e1. All the pieces of white attacking yeah. the e4 knight and it cannot be moved. But wait a second, after the first rook e2, I can, I can also play knight d6. Anyway, this moment has passed, so we will not know exactly. Yeah, maybe the first we have there. to take knight e4 and then, then bishop e4 and then mm -hmm. 
in any case, the D4 pawn has fallen for the B6 pawn. A4 was pushed, and now the E pawn as well drops. So Elena has fought her way back into this game where she was in a difficult yeah. situation, and now it's going to be a rook end game where her rooks are very active. Yeah. I heard your prayers before this match. Please, rook end games, end games, all the time. <laughs> rook end games. <laughs> Bishop Your prayers were heard. <laughs> Night and games, we haven't seen many, so I'm rooting for that as well. <laughs> Queen and games, they are most annoying ones. Oh. Rook c8, rook c2. Can we mate? Rook h2, rook h1. You're seeing mate in this <laughs> position? What? F5. Come on. F5. <laughs> F5, F5. F5. rook c2, rook, rook h2, rook h1, mate. Okay, so Pico has called it. And if she calls it, it's the truth. Plus, now there's a very annoying pin on the back rank, so just in time, while steps away from it. But still, black can double on the back rank, and this bishop has barely any squares. Yeah. Bishop d3 as well. What's going on? Yeah, Wait, bishop rookie one, rook c2. c2. Check. Tactics. Tactics. Lots isn't, of tactics. Isn't Erica just lost now with the is rook it? hanging it and is. the bishop too? This is it. She collapsed in a position where she was better. Yeah, indeed. Where happened what I missed it because I thought that after e4, knight yeah. f2, white has initiative, but tactics all over the game. Rook d2, rook c2, it, it's going to be very difficult. What a turn of no, event. Yeah, there was a slight <laughs> heart attack because it is almost, but the rook controls the c4 square. Still, some technical difficulties because the a plus pawn is a counter attack chance for white. But in normal circumstances, this should be a win for Elena. Yeah, and now the king will come, king h6. Um, should we give up the f5 pawn or not? Because we can now play rook a5 mm -hmm. uh, and king f5, then rook c5. Yeah, rook a5 is on the board. King f5 cannot be played. Um, and uh, next, we can play now rook c5. And then king h6, g5. This is indeed a way to push the g-pawn and attack the white king, stepping out of the seventh rank. a7 is just one square away from promotion, but how do you get that pawn to a8, the rook b8? Can I, can I play rook a8 right now? Yeah, that's one way to stop it and attack the a7 pawn. Why not? Yeah, she gives a check first. I'm not sure that it was needed, but she she decided to give the check and then attack the a7 pawn. Yeah. Rook b6 was the problem. I thought maybe Ooh. g5 was uh, one of the moves. Wait. Perpetual. Yes, this has just gone wrong for yeah. Elena. So first it was Harika who had a better position, then Elena bounced back. Yeah. And in the end, it was a draw. Overall, it's a fair result because both <laughs> players must be happy and disappointed at the same time. Yeah, and we should be happy also because we got the end games. I got my tactics. Yeah. And we have a game, same d4, d6 on the board. But now Alina is playing what I wanted to play. But I play it a little bit. E4. I like this. <laughs> yes. Emphasis. Go for it. The opening. <laughs> Why and do you want to play this? Let's. Let us know about why you like this structure. Yeah, uh, I play it a bit differently. I play with e4, knight c3, queen d2, mm -hmm. um, just to get rid of the bishop on uh, g7. Uh -huh. it, it's a very interesting uh, thing because uh, usually in pure or king's Indian, it's not very nice, uh, this bishop on g7, because it is closed uh, with e5 pawn, but it has so much perspective after f5 opening um, that it might be dangerous. And white in perk is trying to get rid of the uh, bishop uh, with bishop h6 trade is a good trade for white because it weakens the dark squares around the king. Though in King's Indian, black is trying to get rid of the dark squared bishop because it's a bad bishop and it disturbs black in the attack. But now we don't have King's Indian, we have Perk, so I think it would be nice to trade the bishop, but we didn't have a chance so far. 
there was no chance. And the knight made it to F4 in the meantime, which is good for black, of course. This is an, a very annoying piece in any opening. If you get your knight to F4 or F5, depending on the perspective, it's close enough to the king and not so easy to change the way because G3 or G6 would weaken the king and the H3 square as well. So it's a good thing to have a knight like that. Yeah, totally agree with you. H5, H4 is a nice way to gain space uh, on the king side. At some point, queen G5 might be uh, played. Also, though, it looks like that uh, it, it might not be uh, it, it's underpinned. But the thing is that after queen G5, bishop C4 is a threat, bishop C4, and then knight H3 winning the E3 bishop. So I expect at some point queen G5. But... Probably nobody would fall for this bishop c4, bishop c4, knight h3, and I would have to go back. Uh, it's still a threat that why they have to deal with b6, making sure that there will be no captures. Although bishop takes a7 immediately, well, it was some kind of a threat because a5 after bishop takes a7, b6, a5 saves the piece. So therefore, b6 protects the pawn, queen d2 now some pressure here, and also knight takes c5 ideas. Yeah, I think I. I think this is the moment where we can say that white has slight advantage because white can also think of g3 at some point, uh, kicking out this knight. White has control over the d file. Knight c4 is a nice piece. Bishop uh, on g7 still stays pretty passive piece. And after queen d2, uh, white can also think of just uh, of gaining the extra pawn by bishop f4, ef4, and uh, queen f4. So black has to do something about it. H3, interesting, to force white to go G3 and now knight G2. Yeah, using the fact that well, if we take bishop G2, either bishop C4 happens or HG2. Uh, so that is why bishop F2, but this knight is kind of stuck on uh, G2, so it cannot do much if we move our knight. Um, we don't want to move knight E3, but we, we can take it and now knight E3. By the way, Bishop g2, I think that bishop c4 would be nicer because now after knight e3, the g2 pawn will be lost and it will mm -hmm. be still extra pawn for Alina. Yeah, it is an extra pawn and still a point lead for the Armenian Grandmaster. Now with this uh, pin, Black is trying to create counterplay and she has a pair of bishops but it seems to be a very solid structure and a healthy extra pawn for Elena. Yeah, uh, after a5, uh, the material is equal. B takes a5 and white uh, doesn't have any more the extra pawn, but black's uh, structure is uh, mm -hmm. ruined. So black can have some counterplay uh, on the king's queen side with queen b7 and open b file to put some pressure on the b2. Uh, pawn, but white has her own trumps on the king side with knight g4, h4, and also uh, queen might come queen a6 and attack all these queen side pawns. Do you like this move, h4? I, so I, I, I do love it. it. I know it. Even if it's not a king side attack, a dangerous king side attack, it's good to take away the g5 square. And who knows, maybe in the future, h5. Yeah. Though queen a6 was, I think, also interesting before allowing a4, because after queen a6, it was clear that black would lose one pawn. a7, a5, and c6, all of them were hanging. And um, yeah, I think that Alina missed a bit of uh, the moment where she could take the initiative and um, uh, play for advantage, because after queen b7, now white has to get passive. Quick reminder to our viewers about the next semi-final that will be on Sunday between the two Russian Grandmasters, Alexandra Kostenyuk, former women's world champion, and Valentina Gunina, multiple time European champion yeah. and teammates. They are teammates in the Russian Olympic team that won gold medal several times at Chess Olympiads and European Team Championships. So that's gonna be also a really tough fight. And the winner of today, plus the winner from Sunday, will play in the overall final of the Women's Speeches Championship on June the 27th. It's a $20,000 prize fund we have for the Women's Speeches Championship. Plus, the winner will qualify for the General Speeches Championship where the likes of Anish Giri will compete. And it's also a free ticket to the Isle of Man 
FIDE Grand Suisse, which is a very strong tournament. Only invitations are accepted there. The best players in the world get a ticket plus the winner of the Junior and Women's Speed Chess Championships. Exactly. A lot of things happened in this mm -hmm. game. A lot of trades uh, happened. And the position we have now is that Black is trying to get something going on and White is trying to... Uh, very hard to uh, have counterplay. Now, Black gives up F7 pawn, which uh, I think gives White a lot of chances for perpetual, Queen G6, mm -hmm. Queen E8, and I think we have draw. It's going to be another draw, which means that Elena keeps her one-point advantage. In this game, she had an extra pawn, but Black did create counterplay, the A pawn, then yeah. drop. So it wasn't an easy game at all. What we have seen so far is that this is a very balanced match. One point lead for Elena Daniele and the six-time Armenian champion. But Harika will definitely try to fight back. It's still 37 minutes left from this portion and then half an hour of bullets. So anything can happen. Let us know who we are rooting for. And we do keep an eye on both chats on Chess TV and Twitch. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And if you're not on Twitch, make sure to come by twitch.tv slash chess is where we are on Twitch. That's where you can hit the follow button and you will get notified next time we go live. Yeah, and now Harika changes her strategy. She's uh, going for C4, Knight of 3, E3, B3 structure rather than uh, uh, having uh, another uh, fianchetto with G3. Uh, uh, this uh, reminds me a bit of uh, the Catalan type of positions, but we have Bishop on uh, C4 instead of uh, G2. Uh, now, trades happen in the center, but uh, I think it is White who is playing for initiative because of the open, semi-open uh, D-file and uh, better placement of uh, the pieces rather than uh, Black, because Black Queen still has to find a place mm -hmm. uh, to hide and not to uh, get under uh, Rook's way. Yeah, and that will be a question where to hide the queen because the c file is not good for the fact that the other rook will come. Normally, the screen will be okay on b8, for instance, but first you need to make sure that you don't get your rook stuck on a8. That's yeah. the challenge. Yeah, and after e4, white wants to uh, play probably e5, uh, then create something, or I want to create something on the king side with bishop d4, but that is tactics. tactics time. Knight takes e6, let's just show it quickly. If f takes e6, bishop takes, white has taken two pawns and then will win back the piece. Very nicely done by Harika. Yeah, very nicely. Queen b8 was a blunder. Probably b5 was very much necessary uh, before queen b8 because now uh, Elena is just a one. Um, pawn down and it does not look great. I don't see any compensation for uh, black for the pawn. There isn't compensation and the time management has been roughly equal. But what happened? Oh, another it, tactical it, motive. It, What's going on? No, but 95, what it was it blunder? 95, 95 yeah, because knight is hanging. It, so he takes six, but then bishop g5. So this was also hanging, but too many pieces are hanging. So she goes for knight takes h7, but so then knight of four, and yep. white, black has peace. It is a piece, and the problem with this move is that it covers the h5 square as well. So there's no queen h5. It's an extra piece now for Elena from a pawn down. She ends up having an extra piece. Oh my piece. god! The moment I say that I don't see any compensation for the pawn, this happens. Always they prove me wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was a blunder. Something missed by Harika for sure because knight d5 was not uh, supposed to be played as knight d5 and knight was also hanging. Uh, yeah, there's the two pieces. Yeah. We, we didn't add up the number. It just happened so quickly. Let's just play through this move. A calm, a calm moment. We don't really have time for this kind of analysis normally, but this was a critical moment when white is a pawn up. She attacks the f7 pawn, knight e5, everything is still going great. Knight d5, wanting to be tricky, but she tricked herself. If she takes back on d5, this is captured and the e5 knight was protected. Yeah. Wow, what a turn of events. Exactly, and that was a big blunder uh, from Harika. Now Elena has a gain two-point lead and only half an hour left, 33 minutes left for uh, the three plus one uh, minute portion, but nothing is decided yet, yet as two point lead is 
really nothing when you have bullet portion ahead. Yeah, and moments might like get crazy this, there. Moments like the one that yeah. you have just witnessed are the ones that we want you to clip. We are going to choose one more time the clip of the day. So make sure that you clip every single moment of the broadcast that you thought that was very memorable. It was something exciting, something that you liked from the games or from the commentary. Make sure to clip that and we will choose the clip of the day after the next break. So you still have half an hour to clip the favorite moment you've seen today. Yeah, and we have again the perk defense. Oof, I don't like this perk. <laughs> and that is one more time coming to F4. We have learned a lot about these structures already. That's a good piece there, but the bishop on G7 is not that strong. Pros and cons. Yeah, I'm hating on perk, but yeah, it is uh, definitely an opening to try in the Blitz game. And it is uh, definitely the opening that Harika likes because she is using that a lot of times also in her classical games, also in Blitz games. And it's definitely in her repertoire. She feels comfortable with uh, such a uh, structure. I like more open uh, structure where it's clear what you want to do and you're not struggling with development, but of course it has uh, its own advantages because if white over pushes, then black can use the weaknesses. And um, if white doesn't do anything, it will be easy for black to equalize. Now with this expansion on uh, the queen side, a4, b3, that makes perfect sense. Also, it allows the bishop to come to a3, now threatening to win an exchange with this tactical motive. So the queen moves out of the diagonal. That's smart. And there can be tactics on the king side because of this f3 knight, a check, for instance, knight a3, g takes, that would uh, weaken the structure of white. Yeah, exactly. You're very right. Queen f6 and knight f4 combination, um, uh, or of course, serves the knight h3 tactic. h5, once again, the a uh, move that we've seen nearly in every game that Harika played with Perk H5, H4. And uh, now it is up to White what to do so far. I don't think that White managed to get something out of the opening because uh, it seems like Black is having a free hand on the king side with Knight of four, Queen of six, H pawn is already there. And White still needs to finish the development with Bishop A3, Rook E8, get the rook into the center, rook d1, but then it's not clear what to do with this knight on d2, as you cannot go back to f3 because of knight h3, you don't have good square, maybe knight c4. Rook d1 was the choice of Alina, still we we'll, shall see where this knight will go, bishop h6, improving the knight, improving the bishop, supporting the knight, and there is already all these pieces that I'm highlighting, aiming at the White King. So Harika has a good chance to bounce back in this game. Two-point lead for Elena Danielian, who knocked out uh, the top seed of our event, Katarina yeah. Lano. And Harika, she fought her way into the semifinals by eliminating the number one player of France, Marie Sebag, in a very convincing way. That was, yeah. that was a very clear match for Harika. By... Five-point lead, uh, she counts mm -hmm. during the match and she won the match 15 and a half versus 10 and a half. And uh, yeah, it was very convincing. And she said in the pre-match uh, interview that she feels not so worried about the second match uh, as the mm -hmm. first match because she is now, um, uh, she is now familiar with uh, the format. Uh, she has experience and she was looking forward to the start of the match. I think both players have felt the same relief after surviving the first match because none of these players, participants of the Women's Peak Chess Championship, they play online, they practiced also for the match, but yeah. you don't know how it is until you're in it. This is three hours, three yeah. and a half hours in total of a constant battle where they go back and forth, white, black, white, black games, 90 minutes of the first portion, then an hour of three plus one and yeah, a half an it's hour. It's very difficult. But meanwhile, the pawn is lost. Yep, because the pawn is gone. Because of the b5 sacrifice, uh, I think I think Harika might over push it a bit, but I like how Alina um, uh, reacted uh, against this uh, perk because 
uh, it was difficult to find a good spot for the uh, night, but she tried to trade everything on the DeFi. And I like the way, I like it because when you're defending, the more uh, you simplify the position, it's easier to um, defend. One problem with Elena's position is the time. It's only 20 seconds left for the six-time Armenian champion, and there is danger around the White yeah. King. So extra pawn on the queen side, but look at the White King and this G pawn coming as well. Knight H3 is an idea. Still, this is getting hot in here. Yeah, it is indeed. Bishop C4 trying to get rid of the uh, light squared bishop and having control on the D5 square, which might be a four plus for uh, the knight. The question is how dangerous can the attack be uh, uh, Attack be as there are no uh, rooks on the board anymore. Trade on f5 and then the king is coming no, out. This is there. not no. the way, no. I think, to continue the attack as white will have now control over the light squares with h3 or f3, queen e4, knight e4, and it's still extra pawn. It is, and now she's trying to chase away the knight from f4 by pushing g3. So definitely this hasn't gone the way Harika was hoping for. Still the position is dangerous, and you see that Alina is down to seven seconds. Ooh, another pawn with a check drops, and queen e3 threatening to trade queens. Very well played by Alina. Yeah, very well played. Queen f5 probably, oh, why not queen f5? Um, okay, she wants something different yeah still some ideas with an attack but more the more trades the better for elena of course four seconds left for the armenian grandmaster yeah she's very fast she's really fast uh all she needs to do is probably to yeah it, it's not enough to give check she just should not um she just shouldn't blunder bishop d4 check Bishop B5, once again, opposite color bishop yeah. on the board. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Well, Elena well, is trying okay, to. Queen B5, I was like, what? <laughs> Who's move? Why was that bishop hanging? Elena is trying to play for a win, actually, and it's amazing. She's trying to play for a win when she has four seconds on the clock because she could repeat the moves, but she refused the mm -hmm. uh, three time repetition. Uh, though. Oh, b6, that's a nice, nice trick. Yeah. The d6 bishop is depending on the c7 pawn, that's why b6. Queen f7 is hanging. Yep. Why was that not taken? Also, b7 was possible. Yeah. Why did she take on c7? Yeah, well, uh, probably she didn't see, but now can she escape from the perpetuals? Well, black will have to... Oof. Five seconds. Oh. Okay, now queen d4 takes... check, queen g4, take g4. Uh, four yeah. seconds left for Elena is the winning game. Queen two. This is really winning. Just uh, it's, it's important false, that no, Elena is it. fast. Oh, and many missed chances, but both players are down to second. There's only a one second increment. That's why right. they are not the most Queen precise. Seven moves, now, but, but time. don't don't blunder. But okay, it's mate. Mate G six. Mate on the board. Wow, Elena. Wow, this victory now is on a three point lead in the match. Yeah. And she, she's she's playing very convincingly. Like she's sure what she's doing. Uh, she feels that she's very much into the match, and it, it feels like she's very well prepared. Yep. She's changing uh, the openings all the time. She's very flexible. I really like it. Really like it. And it seems that Harika can't really believe that the match is going this way for her it's not something that she expected yeah of course she knows that elena is a dangerous opponent she watched the broadcast about how elena eliminated the top seed of our field katarina lano but still uh, it is harika who is a rating favorite harika won her match more convincingly yeah so she had all the reasons to be optimistic about today's match yeah but here we go elena once again the underdog he, she's playing so accurately, even when she is in a worse position. Yeah, exactly. And she's always uh, trying to fight. She's always finding the uh, resources to uh, get back into the game. And she's very fast. I'm shocked with the uh, mouse skills because yeah. it's uh, really not so easy. What do we have on the board right now is very, very interesting. Uh, so um, 
Harika, she did not play C4 anymore, but she uh, started with Knight of 3, G3 uh, structure. And then after uh, C4, D4, this move, B4 came, which is, um, which might be very good, but also might be a weakness if you don't do anything to it. Because if black manages to develop, if black manages to defend the A8 rook and then uh, force white to either move the pawn on B5 to B5 or mm -hmm. uh, to take on A5, then it would be very difficult for white because after B5, C5 square is very weak and B8 you don't want to take, so you just have to defend the B4 pawn. Yes, it has the consequences that Sopico has mentioned. There was no capture possible earlier because the rook on a8 is hanging, so there's a pin on the a5, but it's not clear that white has gained much by this push. c5, to chase this bishop away from b6, bishop e7 is one of the few squares, or taking important. care. That's very important because after uh, bishop e7, then might be uh, there could have been b5, knight e5, very annoying mm -hmm. uh, threat. So bishop f3 was important, bishop f3, bishop e7, and uh, now white uh, still needs to uh, develop. White for now is delaying the development and uh, pushing the pawns to the queen's side, but we should see if it's worth it or is dangerous what Harika is doing. And what's going to happen after rook b8, for instance, when if you push c6, yes, you're saving the pawns and the bishop, but the bishop will be logged in on that b7 square. If you move the bishop, then the b5 pawn is falling and the c5 pawn too are in the air. I'm curious what uh, Harika will play in this position. Bishop, bishop g2. I would play c6. I would go for a uh, second pawn because after c6, uh, also a5 pawn was dropping. Mm -hmm. And then I would go a4, a5, and imagine there's a king on b8. <laughs> yeah. We will not see that, unfortunately, because that was already a decision. Bishop g2 made by Harika and the trade on b5. So we see a completely different position. And it is still the c pawn being alive. But it's it's not the extra two pawns that White was hoping for. Yeah, it's not. And Black has a lot of counterplay because there are lots of squares which are available for the knights. For instance, b3 square, another good square to jump on is knight d5, knight e c3, or knight e3. Uh, uh, lots of uh, counter chances for uh, Black here, the open b file. Um, I think the position is very double edged. If I were to choose, Probably I would choose black, but I think that uh, white is definitely not worse. Probably white has slight advantage. It's a tricky position because of these knights jumping in the position. The c6 pawn can be very good for white, especially if white manages to put pressure on the c7 pawn. But in the meantime, tactical elements can appear because of the knights yeah. being such a tricky piece. And Elena is one more time under time pressure. 44 seconds left for the leader in this match. She's got a three-point lead, but a not an easy situation when it comes to... This is a three-possible result position. Yeah, it is. It is very much very complicated position. I thought that instead of bishop f8, knight c3 was also interesting not to allow this trade, but after bishop d5, e takes d5, knight f3, uh, then the c6 pawn will uh, become uh, a target for black. Mm -hmm. So we see a trade on c5 and how this pawn can easily be attacked but not easily defended after rook e6 while the d4 pawn is protected. Oh, that's a blunder. This is the first blunder by Harika. One yeah. blunder already we have seen in one game Alina hanging her rook but, the, but she was down on time, and this time it was Harika who stepped onto a square that was attacked by yeah. the opponent's pieces. Still so few blunders overall in the match. Yeah, I agree with you, and it looked already like that uh, Elena was uh, going to be in control of the game yeah. as she won uh, the pawn, but yeah, it was either blunder or mouse sleep. We won't know. It's clear now that Elena has four points lead, and four point lead four. is... 
a lot. We still have 18 minutes uh, for this time portion, three minute plus, and then bullet portion mm -hmm. uh, is there where things can go crazy, things can go either way. Harika still has a chance to come back, though it is very difficult after such blunders to uh, get back yeah. because Harika, I think she feels under pressure all the time and then it's like difficult to uh, bounce back, but she still can do it. She's a very strong player. She probably needs to play a bit more aggressive. Uh, she needs to be faster mm -hmm. uh, as well. And maybe she can uh, choose some other openings. Uh, but uh, so far we see a great play by Elena Danielian. Very convincing how the Armenian champion is playing in today's match, even though she is the underdog. And one more time, in this film, we started with eight players, eight of the best female players in the world. But Elena Damian was the one who had to qualify yeah. into this film because we had one free slot for a qualifier tournament. And it was very strong. It qualifier. was a really strong event. She won that that she knocked out the top seed of the event that was Katerina Lano, almost the Women's World Champion, overall Women's yeah. World Champion. She was this close to winning the Women's World Championship last year. So it is. it has been a very nice event for Elena, but it wasn't an easy ride. No, definitely not. And now we have, again, same uh, pawn structure that we've seen many times in uh, this match, though different, uh, always with different piece placement. Now we have bishop on h2 suddenly. I don't know why, because bishop g5, bishop h4, bishop uh, g3 uh, was played. But this I definitely uh, don't like very much for white because of the bishop on h2. Yeah, it is a set piece. The knight on f4 at the same time is very well placed. It can still go into an opposite colored bishop position. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Just <laughs> saying. But we may see an end game or at least a middle game with opposite colored bishops after the trade on f4. And it's happening. Yes. Yay. I don't know why I'm celebrating it, but yes, let's go for another one. It's good for white, though, to get rid of that knight yeah. without any jokes. That was an annoying piece. And now at least she can activate the light square bishop but i still like black because black has more chances to create something um i think maybe instead of yeah king g7 no king g7 had to be played i felt like h5 but then queen e2 would be problematic as well um now we will see massive exchanges on uh, the d file uh, rook d1 white can even uh black can even trade and move d1 and play queen d8 and we will have an equal opposite colored bishop endgame. Equal position, which is good news for Elena because it's only 15 minutes left from this portion. That is, we are over halfway through the match, two third of the match has been played and Elena has a four point lead. It's still possible to bounce back, especially four points in bullet is still nothing, yeah. but I'm sure that Harika would love to get that gap narrower when they reach the bullet or even tie the score before they get to the one plus one yeah of course it's also very important for the price of this match because this time the price in semifinals is three thousand dollars and winner gets one and a half thousand dollar and other one and a half is shared with percentage so it really matters uh what is the final score indeed that's a very good point although i think at this point still harika believes in her chances that she has a way to bounce back so it's not about that she considers the match lost and of she wants not. to win a bigger price for her part but she wants to find a way to actually win the match of course and uh but i don't understand this because now she had the chance to go rookie two and create something right with mm -hmm. queen b6 and maybe bishop e5 but in but she offers the rook trade. Yeah. At the same time, I haven't even realized that Elena is already already on a three-game winning streak. Yeah. That's huge. I didn't add up the numbers, but it doesn't happen often in speech chess matches that a player gets onto such a winning streak unless it's bullet and one player is on the roll and the match is decided already. Here it's a yeah. three-game winning streak. 
this could be the fourth if it wasn't for the fact that this position is way more boring. But the players are down per minute. So this is the danger zone, mouse slips, mistakes, miscalculation. Yeah, a lot of things. I think that Harika is uh, has misplayed it because now what we see, the F3 pawn, which was very strong pawn, is gone. Um, and she wants to create something on the queen side, but it doesn't really matter anymore because the F3 pawn was the dangerous pawn for uh, white. And it's lost. It's gone. Harika had a chance to uh, be more active and play instead of rook d7, rook e2, um, mm -hmm. but uh, she chose uh, the more solid way. So I really think she has to try to be more aggressive. Indeed, uh, she may need to try, but it's difficult when you have spent your whole career playing according yeah. to one style, and then the match situation calls for a different approach. We also praised her when she did get a winning endgame. So she kept her solid style and she still managed to get an advantageous endgame. So maybe she just needs to stick to her style and be more precise. It feels like she's missing out on some of the critical moments. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there, there's there been some blunders from her side, not like big, like one move blunders, but for example, the F3 pawn and a lot of pawns were lost like this during the... Uh, much she, she still has a chance to bounce back as we are uh, still 12 minutes uh, apart from the mm -hmm. um, three plus one portion to be over and then we have bullet mm -hmm. and before that happens remember that we would like to see the clips you found the most interesting most exciting during this broadcast so make sure to choose those moments clip them and there's going to be a selection by the chess.com team that we will show one as the highlight, the, basically we call it the highlight or the clip of the day. Yeah, exactly. And what happens now is a very nice way. Oh my God, two seconds Ooh. for Elena. One, no, she almost like, oh, 1.1 second where she made a move. It's only a one second increment, guys. One. That was no. really tough, really tough. She has to pre-move all the time, but it's Ooh. going to be very very difficult no, she's like she's yeah. like it's yeah. just impossible to live on increments when the opponent has the initiative so it was harika who was attacking it was still an equal position well black has the upper hand but it should still be possible to defend yeah just the time and uh harika managed to get the pawn on d2 and the moment i'm saying that yeah she has to be aggressive that's when harika gets back so i have to be more like yeah, she's playing so solid. She yeah. has to be more aggressive. And then we will see Harika winning uh, these games, having the even score. And then it's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems to work out for her to stick to her style for now. We shall see if she starts the winning streak because it was a four point lead for Elena and I still a yeah. three point lead. So the match is still very nicely in favor of the six-time Armenian champion who is the underdog in the match. We need to see if Harika can bounce back. It's only 10 minutes left from this portion, three minutes plus one second. After that, the players will get a short break and we are heading toward the final stage, half an hour of bullet. Exactly. And this is what we have uh, very much seen in the games, top games uh, as well. Uh, not queen b6, knight b5, and knight e5. Um, so we don't want to allow the knight to jump to d6 with check, and with knight a5, black is attacking the c4 pawn. Knight a4, f3, uh, it drops the c4 pawn. Yeah, but she had to do something with the double attack that is both the rook hanging and the c4 pawn. So something has gone wrong for white. I believe, because it's not normal that you drop the c4 yeah. and black gets to push d5 and there's nothing concrete. There's a threat of knight c7, but e5 stops it. Yeah, I guess g3 was uh, uh, played without bishop g2. Uh, when, normally, when you play g3, bishop g2 is kind of a uh, pre-move, but uh, Harika went for knight b5, early knight b5. Now it looks good, very good for uh, mm -hmm. black and for Elena, who yeah. has already three-point lead. Uh, and Harika has to do something to get compensation for the pawn. Yeah, look at this counterattack. So the b5 knight was hanging, and if you move it, but 
what well, once again where do you move it 93 would drop a piece because after the capture you need to keep protecting the c3 knight as well that's why b3 was played to attack the c4 knight but it means second pawn for um for elena because Ooh, b4. it's not even second pawn but the d4 was a uh, big threat so bishop d2 and b takes c4 oh. this looks very bad it is a winning position for black she still has to be precise because there are tricks over the board because of the king st still in the middle of the board there's potentially uh, a discovered attack if the bishop on g2 is protected but this is or, yeah well actually no harika decided that this has been it sometimes players take this decision because there's a finite amount of time for each segment so yes we were saying that there's a tiny possibility for black to go wrong but actually the position was completely winning yeah it was and it was a good decision by uh, by harika uh, to resign but i think she accepted the wrong challenge uh, for the moment so we have first e4 but she's not playing against elena so we will get um, back i think we may have shortly. lost her i think we may have lost harika it seems that she it wasn't a resignation but a disconnection and in that case we hope that she'll get back soon into the chess.com uh, live chess arena for her game okay someone else has challenged her that's bad don't challenge harika she has an important match to focus on we'll get back harika onto the camera and also everything will be set up one more time when she is here with us hopefully everything is good with her internet she did have problems last time as well but she yeah. figured it out before the match yeah it was uh very nerve-wracking for her because just uh before the match she had problems uh with the internet connection and she could not play from her own house so she had to be driven to her mom's house where uh she connected and then it went all normal but uh now it seems that we have her disconnected it happens and um i think in the pre-match interview she said that uh what's uh what how do you prefer uh, how do you prepare for this match and the, what's the most important thing you should do and she said like it's most important is to have good internet connection and yeah. that's indeed true the time will be set back for those of you who are wondering i believe it, well, as soon as we can get harika back into playing we will also make sure that the time is counted for the games that have been played she is not here she's not in the live arena as far as i can see we are waiting for her to get her internet connection working hopefully it won't take much time and she will be able to continue the match yeah well, let's uh hope so i think that uh we solved the problem looks like uh we have her back and there we are there we see uh, harika well sometimes it happens internet connection is part of the game when it comes to online chess competitions so one more time it is harika who will have to fight back she did lose that last game yeah but the position two was lost it wasn't a disconnection yeah whether she wanted to resign or she just no it wasn't this connection because she i think she, she resigned. resigned immediately yeah. So this, the disconnection happened right after that game. Yeah, um, exactly. We'll just wait for the game to restart and then the clocks will be also reset to the actual time that was spent playing the games. Exactly. So we are waiting for, um, uh, for everything to be uh, set and then we will have uh, we will continue the three plus one portion i think uh, less than 15 minutes is left for uh this segment and then mm -hmm. we will have bullets where we might enjoy and we might have crazy crazy things going on as crazy as when we have 
a spectator live in the studio. <laughs> Would you like to introduce the spectator? We have our one and only fan. <laughs> our one and <laughs> only fan is here. He, he brought me Boba's phone. <laughs> oh, he just brought me Boba's phone. <laughs> that was baby tactics. Daniel was only two and a half years old, but he already knows what chess is, how to move the pieces, future world champion. <laughs> oh, we will see that. We will see it. We already have uh games i don't know why do i need my mobile phone <laughs> but he decided that i uh, needed probably to have better uh connection <laughs> for harika he's yeah. very nice we're so supportive of the players too yes <laughs> and um we have now different uh version uh without e5 the perk without e5 so harika is trying uh differently uh, to play against bishop g5 in a different way she already traded the bishop on g3 and we will see how this game continues i have to say that i still like i like every position for white in perk i don't know I see a very good response by Crazy Kaufman in the chat to why you got the phone. He's saying, Danielle is all-knowing. He gave Sopiko her phone so she could IG stream this. Since Sopiko has become very active on Instagram, I think that would be a great idea, at least on Instagram stories. Actually, she, has, she has an Instagram story from today from the car. I have. I have. We, we were actually also uh, in a hurry to uh, get in time for the broadcast as this lady just arrived like two hours before the my flight was delayed uh, and then we got yeah. caught in the traffic jam in amsterdam so we barely made it to our <laughs> own show but hey here we are shout out to everybody just joining us this is the women's feature championship semi-finals and we are going to see one of these ladies making it to the final that's gonna be on the 27th of june the price fund for the entire event is twenty thousand dollars and the winner of the event will get a ticket to the overall speech chess championship as well as the isle of man fide swiss tournament and that's a huge thing i would love to play in that tournament but i'm not allowed to <laughs> and now we can see what's going on on the board because Ooh. the king is still in the center white king and black already castled so is this something that Harika can hope for some point coming or not? Probably not really, because after Long Castle, the king is very safe also on uh, the queen side. And if f takes e5, white can uh, take f takes g5. And after f takes g5, h takes g5, this bishop on g7 will be forever bad. That is indeed the case now after the trade on f6. We are not getting an opposite color bishop position, which slightly makes me worried, but it it is still a pair of bishops on yeah. the board. We have seen so many of those <laughs> games that I was hoping for another one. No, not the case, but we will see an endgame. Rooks oh, and bishop. Bad endgame, I think, for black because the bishop is way worse than uh, the uh, Bishop on c4. Rook f1 is an interesting decision. And now after rook f8, white can win the pawn by taking rook, rook f8, rook f8, and rook h6. Again, looks very good for mm -hmm. Elena. She already has four point lead yep. and uh, she can probably, uh, she, she has also um, a lot of time on the clock compared to uh, the seconds uh, that we were used to. And after uh, transposing into Rook's endgame, I think that White has risk-free extra pawn. It is risk-free, not the nicest no. of extra pawns because it's double G pawns, but there's no danger at all that White can lose this. And it is Harika who would need to play this Rook endgame for a win. How do you play for a win when you're a pawn down in a Rook endgame? Yeah, that, that would be difficult. Um, but I think that players might uh, agree to a draw pretty soon in this position as there is no use of the extra pawn as it is doubled on G file. But uh, Rook on G7 is very active because it also attacks the G5 pawn and as well uh, it keeps an eye on B7 pawn and cuts the king from coming into the center. 
Uh, that is why uh, Harika is playing king a7, king b6, and probably this is the way to get king closer to the uh, mm -hmm. center, but king c5 won't be played as the b7 pawn will be lost. This is going to be so difficult for Harika to make a comeback with a four point disadvantage. Only the bullet yeah. portion is missing. That's going to be half an hour. And uh, yes, this is definitely not something that she was expecting, I believe, because you come into this match with the confidence that you have beaten the number one player of France, Marisa Bug. That was a very clear match in favor of Harika. She's also one of the highest rated players in the field. She won the bronze medal three times in the Women's World Championships. That is the classical Women's World yeah. Championship. Such a huge achievement by Harika Dronavalli. Higher rated than her opponent. And yet today she is struggling. Yeah, she is struggling versus Alina Danielian. And now what we have on the board is that White really has the extra pawn as G pawns were traded. But uh, after these perpetual checks, this game will be uh, drawn. So we have a draw. And we will see if we go into the bullet portion or we will uh, we'll still have uh, three minutes games left. We I do think have we do still a game left. So the time has to be set back to another three minutes that's left from this segment because of the time that Harika lost for yeah. the disconnection. Uh, we, will, we, we will give her the chance to play more obviously because the time started ticking, but it wouldn't be fair to yeah. her, of course, to lose that time and she was just trying to get back her internet connection. Yeah, so these things won't happen. We have one more game, I think, in three plus one second um, portion, uh, because we have three minutes left and only one game can be played. And after uh, the very normal uh, e takes, c takes, if we get this position reversed, Carlsbad, I would uh, say. So the plans are um, more or less same. Either white goes with uh, knight f1, knight g3, or uh, probably she can also play queen e3 and knight e5 at some point. A4 is uh, one way to play against uh, the minority attack to uh, have a pawn trade if black plays b5 and the trade happened and knight e5 is on the board, which I think makes um, pretty white's position pretty balanced and equal. Yes, but she will need more than an equality. Knight on e5 is nicely placed, as we said, and it can be followed with the other knight. But how will she imbalance? How will she unbalance this position where she is trailing? It's a four-point lead for Elena Daniela. Yeah. So Harika has to try something in this game. It's a slightly better position now with the a5 opening up for her rook and the knight nicely placed on e5. Will she convert it into a full point and make it only a three-point lead for Elena? Yeah, that we will see uh, very soon in this game. Black is trying to uh, get her minority attack with b5, a, b, a, b, and b4, which is a very common answer to b5. And the idea is to get another knight on c5 via knight b3, knight c5. Knight e7, Alina is telling her that, hey, you're not in time for knight b3, knight c5. Mm -hmm. How do you protect the c3 pawn? Rook c1, still aiming for knight b3, knight c5 afterwards, but knight f5. Also, the black knights are trying to find a better location. Yeah, and after knight f5, knight d6, it might be black first who will uh, jump to c4 or e4 square. Black is doing totally uh, fine in this position. I, I would choose black um, because after knight d6, black also has uh, knight e4 or knight c4. And um, but then f6 might be a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. King h7, f6, but we have to be careful not to uh, give up the e6 pawn so easily. This is a complex position that's a good chance for Harika because she has somewhat more time on the clock, so the time management is great. Putting pressure on black, that's great. We shall see if she converts it because the fact that she's been trailing behind, it's a uh, once again, a four-point lead for Elena. 
and she lost that one game for the disconnection. Then yeah. she had to struggle to even make her internet connection work again. So not just the fact that she was already behind uh, during the actual games, but internet too was against her record. It's difficult to yeah. me mentally just say, okay, I can still do it against all odds. Yeah, it is indeed very uh, difficult, and especially when uh, you're all the time for two hours under pressure, and sometimes uh, the things go your way, but it's uh, been misplayed, and then you're again under pressure. It's very difficult, but a uh, good thing for her is that a bullet portion is coming, and then yeah. you don't have time to think about yeah. these things. You have That's to be true. very fast and you have to play very fast and try your best best to bounce back. This position, uh, now that we are looking at it with the knights nicely placed on C5 and E5, but also black knights are, well, on E4, so that the other one, the one couldn't make it to C4 just yet, but it was a very similar situation with the knight outpost. And now black is thinking whether to take back on E4 with the pawn or with the knight, with the rook enjoying the open a5, and this queen on h4 is threatening. So Elena, one more time, is finding chances for herself. Yeah, exactly. And after knight e4, if knight e4, maybe queen b5. So I guess uh, d takes e4 will uh, be played. Yep, and yeah. d takes c4, queen e2, and maybe rook a3 or queen g3. Yeah, rook a3. And c4. That's an interesting breakthrough. In order to create a pass pawn, the b pass pawn, trading on c4. But now, once again, we see a heavy piece endgame where black is very active with the queen on g3. And if this rook can also be activated, rook a2 is not possible. But another rook, rook c3, I like to yeah. activate the rook in that way. And also, black has a pass pawn, but he, that she will need to take care of the b5 pawn. So, rook b3. That's a good idea. Yeah. Starts b6, but gives up the e4 pawn. Yeah, gives up the e4 pawn, though she can take rook b5, and then there is no danger, absolutely no danger, um, that the pawn would be promoted, I think, this endgame. Yes. Yeah. So. Especially after queen f3. So Harika even decided to go for the queen trade herself. I'm not sure that that was a practical decision in a situation where she still needs to win. But... I think this is something that she is not the kind of player who would try to go for some kind of a dirty trick no. to keep the queen just so that maybe there will be some blunder. She is a very solid player who likes to convert better end games and she sticks to her style during the match, even now when she would badly need to start winning games. Yeah, it's not easy to uh, play what you don't want to play or don't feel like to play. You always play. Oh, and it's a draw. Yeah. And so that means that this is the end of the three plus one portion. We're going to go for a short break, but don't go anywhere because we are back with the most exciting, most number of blunders portion that is bullet. Half an hour bullet is left with Elena Danielian leading the match with four points. See you in a very short time. We'll be back soon.
Fisher Random Chess, a game where creativity is king and memorization impossible. 960 different back rank configurations turn the world's best chess players into mere competitors trying to outwit and outclass each other with every unprepared move. Only one will be worthy of the title, official random chess champion, but the best part is that champion could be you. The Fisher Random Chess Championship will be unlike any tournament ever held. With a global qualification system, for the first time ever, everybody truly has a chance to prove themselves the best player in the world at a chess variant. Are you a chess artist worthy of the 11th World Champion's admiration? We're going to find out. The tournament features open qualifiers beginning on April 28th and the title player qualifier stage beginning in June. Over $300,000, Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru Nakamura, and world champion Magnus Carlsen await you at the later stages. The Fisher Random Chess Championship title is there for the taking. Will you make a run at it? Go to frchess.com today to register and stay tuned to chess.com for all the latest news and updates regarding this historic event. It's the FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Championship organized by Dune AS and chess.com. Welcome back to the semifinals of the Women's Speed Chess Championship between Harika Dronavali and Elena Danielian. We are witnessing the underdog Elena having a four point lead with only the last segment, the bullet portion, yeah. is ahead of us. That is, Harika has only half an hour to bounce back. Will she make it? We'll see that, but it's bullet time, ladies and gentlemen, and things might go wrong for Elena here because. You never know in Bullet, it might happen crazy things, crazy blunders. So we are hoping for fun games and we're going to enjoy uh, some chess. Four point lead though for Elena is quite a big uh, margin for her. So she is for now the favorite uh, mm -hmm. in the match, but the match is not over yet. We still have 30 minutes of the Bullet game, which started right now. With one D4 and F5, Arika is going for the e Dutch. Ooh, e4. e4. This is going to be fun. They are changing their opening repertoire for the bullet for a more dynamic paragraphic approach. Yeah, and uh, I think here uh, Arika decided to um, to uh, play another uh, thing because it would be very uh, difficult to play perk in the bullet, so we need something uh, more. She also needs to bounce back because she's four points down and we uh, get this um, game right now. Um, I think that, um, I, I don't know, I haven't seen this exact position much um, in my life, but uh, I have to say that uh, for now, White's problem is the bishop on f1. Mm -hmm. It needs to be uh, developed, but uh, White has several ways to uh, develop it. Either she can move the queen uh, after moving the knight for now, uh, of course, or play uh, g3 at some point. And uh, more problems I see for Black is that this bishop again on g7, it's closed with the f6 pawn, and you don't want to move on uh, from f6 to f5 as it will weaken the e5 square and it will close the c8 bishop it's an exciting position to have opposite co uh, opposite colors <laughs> opposite side cards i keep saying opposite color bishops it is opposite colored it bishops is. but it's more about the opposite side castling that is white will be aiming to attack on the king side and black is aiming for the queen side, knight jumping to c4, pushing the a pawn. Who will be faster? That's the question. Who can make the attack work as soon as possible? Yeah, so far Harika is doing good. Uh, she has very good time management, and it is very important in bullets to, uh, to be faster, to have good time management, because even if you're playing uh, and you have worse positions, time is what matters. Mm -hmm. As Alina, uh, Elena is already 15 seconds, under 15 seconds. 11 seconds now, 10, 9, I'm gonna get a heart attack. No Alina, time make to think. Move. No time to think. Uh, that, that was a weird moment to uh, think, but Rook C6, I have a good feeling for uh, this game for Harika. She is doing very well. She has more time on clock and knight c2, knight b4. She created already some attack. Rook c2 is coming then 
afterwards rook a2 and this looks very bad for Alina. Rook a8, the pawn has been captured. Alina tries to keep the queen and trade it for the black queen instead of giving it up for the rook and the knight. But even the end game doesn't seem to be good for white because the king is so vulnerable that just takes back and then the rook can come to the a5. Sorry, I'm clicking here and there. That was just me being clumsy. Yeah, it was a bit weird because white could take the h7 pawn with a check and intermediate move. But instead, we have now an uh, equal end game where uh, black is still doing good. Five seconds for Alina. Um, at not so easy position as the bishop is better than uh, the knight. White king is way too active. Bishop and as we prayed, that is too active. Rook b4 uh, is a big threat. And oh, rook and this somewhere, rook, rook somewhere. But it's not as big of a deal. I feel like Harika missed a much clearer chance than this yeah. end game. And now this is still not that simple with the c1 marching forward. Bishop c7 will happen, maybe, and we will get this position. It's still difficult for white to uh, hold because uh, white has two, black has two pawns, and yes, it's extra piece, but we have uh, three minutes. White oh, one. Mate! Mate on the board! It's mate! She oh. stepped, she didn't realize that after king c4, oh white is threatening mate! Oh my god. If you haven't clipped anything yet, that was a moment. To remember, jeez, okay. an end game where Black was trying to win with the two pass pawns. Yeah, difficult, difficult uh, times for Harika as it, 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 this game shouldn't uh, have been so um, ended so. Uh, but okay, now five point lead for Elena. That's a huge, huge it is score. Huge. Whoa, and I still can't believe what happened. Harika basically had a winning position from the middle game, then we don't really know why she decided to go for the end game instead of trying to find a more dynamic approach and yeah. going for the kill. The white king was so weak. Yeah, but in bullet you play with, you play automatically what your instincts mm -hmm. are saying because yeah. you don't have uh, time to think. So uh, that's what happened. And uh, there was a big blunder uh, of mate in one, which uh, made Alina Danielian five points ahead of Marika Dronavali, uh, but still, there is 25 seconds, 25 minutes of bullet left, and we will uh, see if Harika is able to bounce back. We shall see. It's getting more and more difficult, and it's like sometimes it feels like when things go wrong, it's just yeah. easier for things when to go even it worse. Indeed. But for Elena, it's the opposite side of the same coin. It has been a dream event for the Armenian champion. She qualifies to be in this field. She was the only one who had to fight through an open tournament to get a spot in the Women's Features Championship. Yeah. And then she knocked out the top seed, Katerina Nine, Olano. Two, yep, tactics, tactics over the board because of the pin here. Or maybe not, because who, Nine, who no. tricked who? <laughs> yeah, knight a4, bishop a4 is there. And yeah, extra pawn for Elena once again, but maybe uh, in bullets uh, it doesn't matter so much as still there are two bishops on the board, open d5 and e5 pawns are very, very uh, strong. Rook a2, rook comes to e2, and then bishop g5, bishop f6, can white mate. Bishop f6 is the next move, mm -hmm. and afterwards queen g5, maybe bishop e4, bishop f5, Queen h6. I want to see mate on the board. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to see it, but it's not that simple with the knight being on f5. And bishop f6. Harika decided to trade that bishop that you were going to use for the mate. Bishop f6. I would have given up the exchange and played for the mate. Well, she has a different strategy, the e passed yeah. pawn, and it still creates tactical element because it's such an advanced pawn. So with the queen's and the queen and the rook supporting that pawn and ideas with oof, lo loads of ideas, for instance, checks on the long diagonal. This yeah. is a nice win after queen b4. Actually, that rook was trapped. I was going to say that queen b2, but no, the rook on a3 was trapped. Yes, rook on a3 was trapped. It was very nice uh, way to end this game. And now we have a game e4 
G6, D4, Bishop G7. But what Harika is trying, Harika is not moving the E pawn yet. So she's trying to develop her pieces, Knight D7 and H6, not to allow Bishop G5, Knight F6, and then E5. Four point lead for Elena Danielian, but it's still almost two, 22 full minutes. 22 minutes in bullet is a lot of time. Anything can yeah, still happen in this of, match. A lot of games indeed. And we we had this position in the uh, three time and five time, uh, three minute and five minute uh, portions. Knight h5, knight f4, g5 are the common ideas. a5, a4, a5, getting the, uh, gaining the space on the queen side. And b5 is... Um, is a way to um, get some space for mm -hmm. black on the queen side. A, B, A, B would be in black's favor, uh, as after A5, B5, white gets some uh, squares with C5, and maybe at some point white can play C4. Now, after B4, A5, B4, it is white was trying to fix the pawn structure, but black pushes C5 in time, although it has the consequence of weakening the D5 square, but it it was more important to get rid of the c6 weak pawn and open the c5 for black's pieces. Yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, I think that black is doing very good at this moment because the c3 pawn is weak. Knight d5 is not very dangerous as bishop e6 can be played or Harika decides to uh, take on d5 and play bishop d7 and then just put pressure on c3 with rook c8. Maybe e4 at some point, f5, e4 might be an mm -hmm. option for her as well. Yeah, lots of ideas and one more time, this is a bullet game, so mainly it will depend on who's got better nerves yeah. and just making sure that they don't hang a piece in one. Exactly. Uh, so far, Harika is playing faster. She's always having uh, more time on clock. And if we don't count the blunder of one move made, mm -hmm. then in bullet portion, she's doing much better. She won another game and now also she's doing uh, pretty okay. Uh, Elena having 15 seconds uh, and um, having very normal position, but it might get out of hand as a lot of things can happen to the board. Nine. Oh. But I see Rookie that eight. they go down on time that's below 10 seconds. It's just been so nerve wracking to watch. Imagine it how is. this to play. How does that feel? It is rookie three. And interesting way uh, of playing. I would play bishop h6. Yeah, bishop h6 and then maybe f4. Four seconds. Uh, both players are we really did queen, short on time. Queen in the game. Yeah, queen b8, queen e8. And then bishop f4, rookie oh, one. Two seconds left for Elena. Rookie one is a threat and bishop f4. This is it. It's yeah. made on the board. Next move, bishop f4 and queen g3. Harika so, wins again. Yeah, wins again. A uh, second uh, win in a row for uh, Harika. Knight of three, b3. Maybe Harika found her uh, way uh, to bounce back. Still, it's a lot of points uh, for um, Elena, but Harika is doing good in bullet. Yeah, what a comeback uh, by the Indian Grandmaster. It is finally the winning streak she needed and it not just means that she's adding up those points it also adds up confidence yeah and you need that confidence in bullet chess exactly and what i like is that she's very fast and uh elena is uh, definitely um ha definitely always under time pressure she's um, also now uh she has less time on the clock, and we have now the normal Benoni, reversed Benoni uh, position. White uh, player chooses to play uh, this structure, and main point is, of course, to go B4 and get something going on on the queen side. But what I dislike in this position is the bishop. Uh, the bishop normally should be on uh, C1, uh, mm -hmm. H6 diagonal, and now we have on a big diagonal where it is locked by the pawn chain on d4 and e5. Yes, not ideal setup for the bishop on a1, but there could be a potential maneuver to go toward a3 or c1 and find a more useful diagonal. The knight on b4, on the other hand, is nicely placed. This knight on f6 cannot leave because of knight d5 coming in. So if the bishop could make it to g5 and take the knight, not <laughs> happening because the pawn is already on h6. 
Right. Uh, but what Black has is the C5 square. Uh, probably we shouldn't forget that Black also has knights on D8 and F6. Mm -hmm. So knight D6, knight C5 is one uh, thing, or knight D7, knight um, C5. Um, and after this, important that bishop doesn't get trapped. So there is a nice intermezzo with bishop, knight C5, uh, first the queen, mm -hmm. and then move the bishop. Yep, the e5 pawn is the target, but knight e7 defended perfectly with the bishop also supporting the pawn. Some maneuvering in this position is a slow paced position, but in bullet, whether it's a strategic, lengthy maneuvering type of position or a, an aggressive attacking one, yeah. anything can happen because of the time pressure. I'm expecting a mistake in the next few moves. Yeah, me too, because we are getting very low on time again. Uh, Harika is doing very good with the time and she's maneuvering. Now we see the bishop on c1 uh, already knight and b4. Whoops, bishop d2 Problems. has to be played because the rook was hanging on e1. Can black do something about it? Knight d5, take, take two bishops. Maybe f4 is at some point an idea for uh, white just to complicate the matters. Mm -hmm. uh, but Harika, bishops. Arika goes for opposite colored bishops. She feels more comfortable uh, in this this way. Queen d5 at some point. Take, take, and queen a1. Takes Giving up e5, e5 and there's no no time plus. There was a threat of mate on aj. Yeah. So this is bad news for Elena who may go down again in this game. Wow, oh my God, five seconds, a lot of checks, but queen f1, if it's possible to play queen f1, then uh, black has chances to draw this game. And there's no mate just yet for white, or can she make it with checks? Because queen g6, is... at some point she can take queen f2 and bishop g2, the game still continues, mm -hmm. of course. And now probably queen, G6, she should take the pawn. She's being very tricky. She should be, uh, though, very careful yeah, because of the yeah. repetition. So if you repeat too many times, it just you, you don't have control of how many times has it happened in a yeah. bullet game. You cannot know. Exactly. So she oh. had to be careful. It was slight mischance because she was. could still uh, take on G6 and the game would continue. But... So far, it's been, uh, it hasn't been this good for Harika in the match. Bullet, she's playing better than the five minute and three minute section. There's still plenty of time left, over 14 minutes, and it's a three point lead for Elena, but it used to be a bigger advantage. So Harika is working her way back into the match and into having chances to make it to the final, because just a reminder that we are here witnessing the first ever Women's Features Championship, $20,000 on the line as the overall price fund and qualification for the General Sweet Chess Championship and the FIDE Grand Space in the Isle of Man. So yeah. lots of things to play for. One of these ladies will play the finals. Yeah, and finals will be very, very nerve-wracking, very exciting. We will have on Sunday another match, but back to this game. What is happening? We have open C file and Harika is trying to get pieces off the board. I have a feeling that she feels most comfortable in the end games and mm -hmm. she's always going uh, for some solid stuff. Um, and sometimes it works out, sometimes not, but so far she is doing very good. Knight C5 now, can black take just Knight C5? D takes C5, Bishop C5, but Bishop D5, Rook D8. That was possible, right? Yeah, I believe so. Knight F4 by white, and still there's this tension between the pieces. Who will take first? Knight takes C5 finally happens. Yeah, Knight takes C5, D takes C5. Now black can take on F4 as well, or she decides to take on C5, but then... Because queen C3 doesn't win a piece, the queen is protecting the bishop. Yeah, bishop D5. And, but this doesn't look very convincing for black. No, it feels like there could have been something more because now it's petering out to a simplified position. It could be a draw if everything is traded. 
Yeah. Still some danger though, because the knight is a tricky piece and there's one knight on the board jumping into G5. Oh, but Kunshi takes, takes, well, we will not have time for that. 20 seconds yeah. left for the players. 20 seconds, queen d5, knight e6. It's always very difficult to play uh, versus knight and um, queen rather than bishop and queen. Though they say that knight is the perfect defender and bishop and queen is better than the uh, knight and queen. Though probably not in this position as mm. white already won the pawn and it looks right again uh, for Armenian grandmaster Elena Daniela. Yes, she has won the queenside pawns that creates two pass pawns for Elena. She just needs to make... Oh, Ooh, that was a free bishop with a check. Yeah, that, Painful. that was, that was uh, a bit sketch too up much. with the current position, although it doesn't matter because Harika resigned. So once again, we see a four-point lead for Elena. Still over 11 minutes left. So there's plenty of yeah. time for Bled but a painful loss for Harika, who was doing well in that game. Yeah, she was doing really well, but there is no time in bullets to think about the game, so she has to continue uh, the play. And now we have different uh, position on the board, which we, well, I think we had it once with knight of three, b3, mm -hmm. but then d4. And uh, we have doubled fianchettos. It seems to be very popular in women's speed chess championship to have this uh, structure on the board. We've seen, because especially in bullet section, it's just easier to mm. pre-move. You play b3, bishop b2, pre-move. And as we know, it's important to have more time on clock. Yes, especially the knight f3, g3 systems yeah. we have seen plenty of times. And as you said, in bullet, you want pre-movable openings. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. H4, um, H5, maybe long castle, and F4 is uh, also some something to think of. Bishop A3 is a nice move because then dark squares are uh, mm -hmm. weakened. Yeah, Queen B2 can come at uh, the right moment. Now Rook B1 is a tempo, even though we can take on C2, but the E5 point is hanging as well. Then D3 is falling. It gets very complicated. Mm -hmm. Queen B2 is indeed very interesting. It is. Because after uh, rook b1, as you mentioned, queen c2, and uh, there is no way to um, defend it. But instead, black castle queen side, which also makes perfect sense, but does allow f5, which locks the bishop in on h7, which is not ideal. That's a dead piece. Yeah, now we have opposite uh, castles, but opposite side castles, but. Uh, Mm, it's uh, not at all clear what's going on. Knight g4, bishop h3. And now knight uh, doesn't have any good square to jump, which means that uh, white just wins the pawn, and it's a healthy extra pawn, so it might look again good for uh, Harika. She defends the c2 pawn with a uh, Rook, though, she could defend it in mm -hmm. another way, but I think Harika thinks that it's more important to have something going on in uh, on the king side. So she gives back the pawn by allowing the capture queen takes a2. And this is a massive position, but it's only seven seconds left for Elena. The yeah. bishop is still very poor. Um, I think, though, what Harika should hope for is Alina's time because the position is far from clear. What's mm -hmm. going on? Whose king is weaker? Now, definitely, white's king is not uh, very safe, and black can uh, have some attack with rook h6, mm -hmm. but white is also doing good with the pawns. Yes, gaining space, and this is a potential pass pawn in an endgame, plus the d7 bishop is still not a very active piece. The queen on e5 is very well placed, putting pressure on the pawn. Looking good for Harika. Yeah, take the pawn on g7, rook g4, just move the king. Like that was rooks. Rook Still some danger. Yeah. The, the bishop rook is too thin, so it's not for the price of the piece, but yeah, but some attack. Rook a6, that's very nice, but I don't Does think it it's more, more than it's just perpetual. A yeah. It's a draw. Harika saves a position where initially she's playing for a win, but then yeah. she didn't see that the king's head attack was so dangerous. Yeah, Elena is very, uh, uh, very tricky in this mm -hmm. way. Like if if she sees some attack going on, then uh, she doesn't care about uh, the pieces. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care about the bishop is hanging or the pawn, and it's very handy in bullet. Yeah, with this draw, it means that the lead of Elena is still four points. 
There's more than seven minutes left. We shall see if Harika can make a comeback. She has to win and she has to do that quickly because this is a limited segment, only seven more minutes. Yeah, seven more minutes. It will be very difficult for um, uh, Harika to bounce back. I don't, if, I don't think that she has a chance to even the match because of the time, seven minutes. It's not, uh, unless one move mate blunders happens very, very quickly. Uh, but, well, in that case, yes. Yeah. But uh, you're right that the time is ticking and that's in favor of Alina. Yeah, theoretically, uh, uh, it's possible to bounce back, but it would be very, very difficult. And what what is going on? Um, we have Queen E7. It was last move, Bishop E2, and White wants to uh, play on the in the center because Black's bishop on C8 is still not developed and. Uh, White wants to use that fact. C4 mm -hmm. strengthens the pawn on d5, and after e5, knight h5, we can trade it, and uh, then black has some attack going on uh, because of open g file and two bishops, and the knight is not very good on d2 as well. And here goes the attack that Sovico was describing, f4 to try to break this defense on the g file. Looking good for black, even if it's only one more capture. It's not so easy to get rid of three pawns. Those bodyguards are still saving the king, but only five seconds left for Elena. Yeah, she goes for the queen trade, which is good when you wanna save your king. Yeah, it, it was good decision by Elena to uh, trade the queens. Now there is no danger to a mate, but uh, there are still two bishops on the board. It's still, uh not very pleasant and she has four seconds it's very difficult to One, uh, she play like oh my gosh she, yeah, she lost some time that means that the gap is becoming narrower three point lead for elena and there's still time so this yeah. was the worst to do yeah that she loses on time and she would have even if you lose the game you need to make sure that the time keeps ticking yeah yeah, exactly. It was just four seconds, though, and we we have five more minutes for uh, the bullet section and three-point lead. Can Harika level the score? What do you think? Maybe, maybe there is a chance for Harika maybe. if she um, gets all together and if she focuses very much and if time allows. Tell us your opinion. We are witnessing the final minutes of this epic semi-finals between Harika and Elena. One of them will make it to the final of the first ever Women's Speed Chess Championship. $20,000 overall on the line and so much more up for grab for the winner. It's just, this is it, the decisive final moments. Tell us if you think that Harika can make a comeback. Oh, Bishop B6. No. Oh, okay. That was just a trade. Sorry, I yeah. thought it was. It was. I thought no, I didn't change what, what, what was going on, but everything is still under control. You scared me. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. Knight c4, knight a5 wins the pawn for uh, Harika, and it's just a healthy extra pawn. Now knight c4 back, then a5. This still looks very good. Uh, what White needs to do is play queen c3, and then rooks on a file, then bishop f1. Yeah, I can dream on. <laughs> dream on. Is that a song? Uh, Robert would know. It's, it's Grandmaster Hess, who's really good with pop culture references. I'm not, and I don't have the voice, as angel of a voice, as Robert. You have. And we're still waiting for the song, which you recorded. It's almost ready, actually, my music video. But let's get back to the bullet game, because there's still... Three minutes left from this portion, and Harika badly C4. needs a quick win. C4, that's a big, big decision because it, it gives up the... Wow, C4, 95. That was the idea mm -hmm. of uh, C4 to open these diagonal tactics. Tactics on the board. D4, it's still not easy, or D takes C4. Probably D takes C4 is uh, better to uh, play, but it's still an exchange for... Uh, Harika, though we have two minutes, a bit more than two minutes, and oh. it looks like Harika won't be able to uh, get back and level the score. It's three-point lead for Elena. 
And probably we can say that Elena Danielian goes to finals. I won't call it just yet, because if she flags, that is an early point for Harika. And there's still time for a, a, a game or two, depending on how long these games are. And if there's a disconnection, you know, you can never <laughs> know, online chess. So I wouldn't call her just yet the qualifier to the finals, but you are right. It's very likely that yeah. the six-time Armenian champion is our winner of the day. What's yeah. the match? Queen e3, rook c3, rook b2. It looks again good for Elena, um, but she has seven seconds on the clock. Uh, the exchange she sacrificed, she has a lot of compensation for that. But if white manages to create some counterattack on the uh, seventh rack with rook a7, maybe, maybe Harika will have a chance. G4 is a nice way to get mm. queen g3 in, but after h5, uh, no, white three. in. Oh. C3, look at this. Oh, the C pawn is marching. And like it is promote the rook G7. Rook G2, queen G2. How do you defend it? Queen D7, knight oh. G5. Wow. Very resourceful. And now two queens well, on the queen board and two rooks. Queen F4, king H3, rook G3, rook. Where's mate? Where's mate? I think it's, I don't see the mate, no but there's a draw with the repetition. Oh. And that's just good enough for Elena. That should make it the yeah. final result of the match. It still matters how many points Harika gets because remember, for today, the price fund of the semifinals is $3,000. 1.5 goes to the winner and the other 1.5 is divided by percentage. Yeah. So the price for Harika will depend on if she can score a win. 20,000 is the overall price fund and Elena will still need to win the finals against either Alexandra Kostanyuk or Valentina Gunina. We will see that semifinal match on Sunday. Yeah, and this is the last game, probably the last game, because we have just 20 seconds left for a uh, one-minute bullet, uh, ga bullet game. And um, yeah, uh, Elena is... And Lina just dominated the match, I think. But it's very difficult because normally when you're playing so long, you uh, lose the track of time, of score. So maybe she doesn't even yeah. know what is the score, what, when is the uh, time up. Because the last match I remember, she asked, like, what happened? Did I win? Did I win? She, didn't, did she, I win? she yeah. didn't know. It was similar in Harika's case, although well, she had a bigger advantage, so she must have known. But the bullet portion is where players lose track because they don't have time to keep tracking the score. Yeah, exactly. So queen a4, we could have taken c6 because it was pin. Uh, but after queen a4, if black moves the knight, then a7 pawn is uh, lost. So that is why Harika goes for the exchange once again and yeah, she definitely has compensation because of the weak king, but queen c4 is a nice way because the more you simplify the position when you have extra material, uh, the better is for you. Queen e5 now, b2 pawn is hanging, so long castle, bishop h6, e6, and probably white can play for um, queen c2, bishop d3, bishop e4, trade happened exchange uh, up for uh, Elena. That's a nice finish for her as it does matter if she wins this, that's adding to her price fund. Yeah. And I'm sure that she will be just in general happy to have won this match against Harika Dronavali, who is a three-time bronze medalist at the Women's World Chess Championship. That is the classical Women's World Chess Championship. Huge achievement. She is the number two player of India. And Elena is taking down yet another giant. Rook F7. Rook F7 can be played. No? Yeah. Rook F7. Rook F7. Rook F7, Rook F7 Bishop e 6 Yeah. Bishop e 6 And she didn't. She went for the H pawn. But still, what a match by the Armenian champion. Yeah. Five seconds. She's playing on five seconds. But she's playing really fast, really well. And she's been dominating this match. She played very good in all uh, mm. time portions. She played very well in five minute uh, blitz games, then she played three minute portion, perfect bullet. I had a thought that Harika was playing very well, much mm -hmm. faster, and indeed, Alina loses on a time right she now, but it doesn't matter anymore. 
Yeah, it does matter a little bit for the price that each player gets, but overall, Alina must be very happy with her tournament. We are going to go for a very quick technical break to get the players ready for the final part of the show, the yeah. interview. Stay here if you want to hear from Alina and Harika about their experience. See you soon. Congratulations to Elena Danielian for winning her match against Harika Dronavali. What an epic fight this has been. And both of you were not aware at the very end what was the result. Elena, your thoughts about hearing that you actually won the match because you weren't sure even after the bullet was over. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's just uh, I'm still shocked because... Uh, I thought I lost uh, in uh, in a bullet, and then I, I thought I lost the match. But uh, okay, uh, once again I couldn't follow the the score. So, and of course I'm happy, but okay, it's <laughs> just a little bit a uh, little bit emotional now. Yeah, you have just finished the match, and Harika, you did such a good job in the bullet portion. Did you feel like if you have a bit more time, you would make a comeback? Yeah, I think I should have uh, had more time and I uh, I also feel that I played a couple of uh, bad games in three minutes and five minutes where I just lost unnecessarily. I was playing pretty fast from the beginning, but uh, in the end, I think uh, Bullet, I had I lost many chances where I was winning and I just lost. Uh, you, uh, you lost uh, one. Okay, you, you drew that game, but it was made in two. When you had the queen uh, with bishop, it was uh, opposite color bishop. It was just mate in uh, queen at uh, queen at seven and queen g8, queen at eight mate. It was very easy. Uh, you mean I was winning or you were winning? No, no, no. You, 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 you were winning, but uh, you, you give perpetual and uh, yeah, yes, you, you, you lost many points in in a, in a bullet, I think. Yeah, in bullet, I was like winning many games and then I just uh, kept losing my chances. I, uh, I think my best chance was in bullet. Yeah, because I'm very, very bad at bullet. <laughs> when, yeah. I don't have time, when I don't have time to think, I think I'm just a very, very bad player. We enjoyed the match. It was really a big match. And uh, I have a question for Harika. Harika, how difficult was it for you to always face different openings for from Alina? Because she uh, kept uh, being flexible. She always 
played uh, different structures and different openings. What are your thoughts about it? Uh, I think, I mean, I didn't uh, really uh, prepare much uh, in the opening part uh, because last match I realized that it's more important to play the middle game. So I just prepared for one hour today and uh, I knew what she might play. Uh, but I wasn't clearly uh, pre well prepared there. Uh, but I think uh, still uh, more than opening here, uh, middle game uh, is more important. And I think I lost my chances in many games. I see. And Alina, changing the openings all the time, uh, does it give you uh, confidence to be more flexible? And uh, you know that uh, yeah, from, the, from the beginning, that was my tactic. I uh, I already thought that I, I would change uh, different open openings just uh, in order to uh, to remove out my opponent from the whole, from her comfortable zone. So that was my main uh, main main idea to change the openings. And did you have openings prepared for different time controls? Like, uh, did you think that you would play this and this in five minute portion, and in bullet you would change? No, 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 no. Uh, I didn't prepare for uh, for uh, for a different uh, time control, but that, uh, but uh, okay, I I prepared for uh, just for for a game, just to change the opening. So that that was my my main plan. Harika, and, for you, and as you see, in this match, I had less one more blunders. <laughs> Hmm. That's true. Yeah. There were there were very few blunders. We were going well, to yeah, highlight yeah, that yeah, this... well, but 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 much more or less. Yeah, it, indeed. And you said in the pre-match interview that the, your main preparation would be to blunder less. Yeah, one yeah, 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 yeah that was exactly yeah, that was my main, uh, main main task. Uh, okay, uh, don't don't laugh at me, but uh, uh, you know how I prepared. <laughs> I just I just uh, solved the. Uh, made in one or tactics in two moves, just uh, just to pain that, just to put my brain uh, uh, in a fast working condition. So that, that was my preparation. <laughs> just so uh, that's the one, more, one more blunders, yes. Thank you for sharing your secrets. Note yeah. that solving one move tactics or yeah, main exactly. is yeah, it's just uh, because you know when you see one move blunders uh, tactics. It's just, you know, it goes like automatically. You will not uh, blunder. <laughs> yeah. And Harika, for you, you must have been struggling because uh, at some point your internet dropped and that must have been psychologically difficult for you too, that you were already trying to catch up, bounce back in the match, and then you would lose one game for disconnection and needing to fight back so that you can even have an internet connection that allows you to play. How do you uh, deal with the situation? Yeah, no. Do you mean I lost a game because of this? No. Uh, oh no, I think it was given back. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm confusing it. But the you simply the fact that you you had to try to get your internet working, or was it? How no, did no, you? No, I I didn't have any internet problem, but suddenly I think I got connected ah. with the game with someone else, and oh, I I couldn't understand how to get back to uh, normal. I mean, I didn't do anything. Okay. Actually. I kept yeah, sorry, I I meant that it's. To us, it appeared as this connection, but then it was that somebody else challenged you. No, by mistake, I cancelled when she did rematch. So I was trying to put it as a rematch and it went into new game and I got connected with some other person. I think I lost some time, so I didn't want to lose it. I, I don't know if I got the time back or not, but uh, okay, what to do. Harika, um, there were some moments when uh, you had a very nice attack, but then you decided uh, to trade pieces. We were thinking that, um, well, I was thinking generally that uh, you would go for mate when you had uh, bishop on g5 and with bishop f6 and queen g5 ideas. Uh, but uh, we noticed that you were uh, you liked to go into end games. Is it uh, the style that you like to play, or maybe if you were more aggressive, it the, would go better for you? What do you think? Uh, nothing like that. I couldn't see anything at least direct, so that's why I could. I I didn't go for uh, many uh, in many positions the attacking way because I really really couldn't see. And I think for me the bad part is I really couldn't prepare much on online because okay I have many uh, tournaments uh, upcoming tournaments so I was preparing for them seriously. And I uh, earlier I used to play a lot of online games, but from past ten days I didn't play any online game. And only today I played some games. And I think somewhere. Uh, 
i lost the touch of the board how we see online and uh, somewhere i i it took some time for me to get back into it i see aina how did you prepare apart from the mating one and the easier tactics did you play also a couple of uh, blitz uh, Games. Yeah, just two days two days ago, I played many one one minute games, and of course I was unlucky. <laughs> I I lost all my games uh, by forfeiting time. So that was uh, my main preparation. So mostly I play bullet games because it's my weak, weak point, so weak, weak, weak part of uh, in my uh, in my online game. So. <laughs> And Alina, we have on Sunday a match, uh, another semifinal coming up, uh, Kostinuk uh, uh, versus Valentina Gunina. And the winner of this match will play against you in the finals. Do you have any thoughts? Who do you prefer to play? I don't have any thoughts because it's a, it's a very, very strong semifinal and uh, both of them are very, very strong. But... Uh, I think I I will have a little bit uh, little bit small advantage because they are very tired because they both came from Kazan they have very tough tournament yeah and maybe maybe because of that I can be a bit, a bit lucky <laughs> well you've clearly been doing excellently you were the only player who had to qualify to play in this field so you won the qualifier tournament first very impressively and then you eliminated the top seed Kartina Lano and today you had a very tough opponent. Harika was was uh, supposed to be very solid player. player in competitions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I am the oldest participant, and I have a little bit more experience from the from my youth. I uh, used to play a lot of online games, and uh, okay, I think I play not uh, not bad online, maybe better than in real chess. <laughs> <laughs> and what's next tournament for you? Uh, is there something you're playing? In uh, the new I'd like to play in uh, July in the uh, Chinese League. Chinese League. And for you, Harika? Uh, I have many tournaments coming up. Uh, this Chinese Women Tournament and a couple of uh, three to four tournaments. So I have like long, uh, two months long trip. So I am busy preparing for them. Thanks for letting us know so that uh, all your fans, Harika, there have been many Indians watching and I'm sure that you have fans uh, from all over the world. They will be following your next event. And for Elena, you have your fan base rooting for you next week on June the 27th in the finals of the first ever Women's Features Championship. You will be playing for the main prize. And I don't know if you ladies are aware, but the winner of the tournament doesn't only get the cash prize, but also the qualify to the general speeches championship where Anish Giri is the number one seed. Uh, <laughs> easy. That's more easier for me. Because <laughs> I will not have many thoughts. <laughs> and the other qualification ticket. <laughs> if we can win the final, then I will be very relaxed at the <laughs> <laughs> so. to play that field indeed i was just going to add that it's uh, another qualification to today i of man for the grand space tournament the winner of the women's speed chess championship will get that ticket too so it's two qualifications added to the price of the champion we hope that that can motivate you alina yeah i didn't know that so it's it's, uh, it's a really uh, good motivation <laughs> I will try to do my best uh, going on with my preparation <laughs> the way like I did. <laughs> so who knows? Uh, Thank you very much for your fight. We won't uh, keep you long. That was a very exciting and epic match and very long one. You should be tired. Thank you both of you for such a great match. Thank you so much. And good luck, Elena, in the finals. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck, Elena. Thank you, Arika. <laughs> Goodbye. That has been such an epic match. And Harika almost wow. made a comeback yeah. with the bullet portion. We thought it was very difficult. It was a five-point lead for Elena. But Harika almost worked her way back. And Elena saw the mating too yeah. that Harika missed when she gave her patcho in the Queen and Bishop M game. Yeah, exactly. In bullet portion, Harika, uh, just she just woke up. She was uh, really dominating the bullet portion because yeah. she was in every game uh, way faster. And she was putting pressure on Elena. But um, Elena had a very big margin. Four-point lead was mm -hmm. a big one. But in the in this, she said that she didn't know if she won the match or not because yep. she lost a lot of games in the bullet. 
And the next, next match one. is on Sunday. We see the Smarter Chess predictions giving a one point lead overall to Alexandra Kostanik. But that was the Smarter Chess prediction for today in favor of Harika. Yeah. So, will this be the case? Both players are extremely strong. The former women's world champion, Alexandra Kostanik, facing the European champion, multiple time European champion, Valentina Gunina. And the two of them have won several times the gold medal for Team Russia at the European Team Championship and yes. Olympiads. And they are both known as a very good blitz players, both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one against American players, Anna Zatonsky and Irina Krush, in a very convincing way with a lot of uh, points ahead. So we will have a very exciting last semifinal coming up and then in finals, we will see who will play Armenian Grandmaster Elena Danielian. That is the question, but Elena Danielian, who has been the underdog today. Made it to finals. Yeah, she was the underdog today. She was the underdog against Katerina Lano. And also in the qualifier tournament that she won, she was on the number one seed yeah. by rating. So an amazing tournament for Elena. We congratulate her and we hope to see you on Sunday when it will be decided who will be Elena's opponent. And please don't go anywhere because we are going to raid one of the participants of the Junior Speed Chess Championship, that is Grandmaster Ali Reza Firuza. Let's go over to his channel with our final words. Sofiko, final words. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>